Previously. Previously. Previously on the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Kind of pepping his step with regard to his to his speaking. You know, sometimes some people speaking. I'm like, all right, OJ, and I'm here. No. It's me, yours truly. Boy, what a beautiful day it is here in Las Vegas. Even though the game is indoors, it wouldn't have mattered, but still. It's nice to have a beautiful day like that. To me, I mean, Dan, you're a doctor. He looks he great. Doesn't, he doesn't look like he's on death's doorstep here. No. I mean, he, he would out-debate Biden here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think, <laughs> wow. You're listening, you're listening to the Bum of the Love Sponge Show. <laughs> Broadcast rights for the Bubba the Love Sponge Show have been granted to this station by the Bubba Radio Network and is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this production without the express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. Like right. I didn't even file. But, but like he, I didn't we, even send in a form that says, I'm Wesley Snipes. Here's my social security number. But then again, they think that if you don't file, then, then they can get you for more. I think they can get you for less if you don't file and don't lie about anything. He, I think they can get you for more if you file as a penalty. and lie. He didn't file for three years, had a $41 million tax debt, and then filed a false claim for a $7 million refund. Oof. Owed 41 and asked for seven. <laughs> yeah. that, should be a new, that should be a new rap song. I owed 41, bitch, but I got seven. Something like that. And he served uh, three years. One thing I, mean, I did. I think, I, think he, I think he served in Florida. Yeah, he did. I think he served like south of Ocala or the Coleman Federal or something like that, which is, you know, not that far from here. Do you get to bunk with the other tax frauds or do they I put you in? They put you in a, it's a minimum security federal prison with other white collar crime guys. Yeah. So it's not super dangerous. It's not, it's, it's not thug prison. They put it's you like in college. It's they smart, put you in there with, that, with the Matt Cox guy who stole right. a thousand IDs. Right. And, and then they put you in with the guy that, you know, um, did you see the latest that the Jacksonville Jaguars had a guy named, his last name was Patel and he was in charge of of, I saw over the weekend. Let me maybe you can find it for me. He was in charge. You know, every every football team, every major organization has like a comptroller that you know that oversees and pays the big bills and right. You know, the, uh, you know, is is he embezzled twenty two million dollars from the, from the Jacksonville Jaguars? Wow, now, sneaky Indian. You gotta have. Think about how many mon- how much money you gotta have in order to. And I think he hide that much. I think he went. It's like I the show. Sent her, I think he went 13 seasons with them. What's that? Let me just I sent you the article. Yeah. I mean, it's like the Shohei Otani thing, Bubba. I mean, the guy took like, what, $18 million debt of, from Shohei or something, his yeah. interpreter. I mean, this guy got $22 million from the Jaguars that are worth, you know, more than a billion dollars. Uh, who is, uh, is it M- Amit? Yes. Amit Patel, former Jaguars employee charged with stealing $22 million from the team. Former Jacksonville Jaguars employee Amit Patel is facing federal charges for allegedly spending more than $22 million of the team's money on his personal expenses, including luxury travel, uh, a, a Punta Vallarta Beach. I think that's a, the real affluent part of Jacksonville. Punta Vallarta Beach condo. Puerto Vallarta? Yeah. I think that's in Mexico. Mm, Punta Vidra. No, Punta Vida. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Punta this, this, Vidra. I know a girl that lives there. So I do know that it's a, it's a swanky. It's the it's one of the swankiest parts of Jacksonville. Yeah, it's mm. south of Jacksonville. And then uh, and a ninety five thousand dollar watch, according to charging documents by federal prosecutors on Tuesday, he was fired by the team earlier this year, and was the sole administrator of the team's virtual credit card program, <laughs> and used the possession position to pass off personal purchases as business expenses. So when you, when you say he was in charge of the virtual credit card system. Would that be maybe he's in charge of the credit cards that people use uh, on apps and things to buy, you know, to buy the uh, tickets or, 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 you know, uh, also maybe jerseys. travel when they're, they're booking hotels for the yeah. team. I mean, you're Heart talking about him. it's hard to hide $20 million. By the way, by the way he also <laughs> spent a ton of money on FanDuel. Oh, nice. More than uh, what? what uh, and the Jaguars asked. I think it was like twenty million dollars, and the Jag the Jaguar the Jaguars asked FanDuel because FanDuel is kind of like an NFL partner, kind of. You know, could you work with us on getting some of this money back? And they told him to pack sand. A bet's a bet. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's, there's some of the stuff he spent money on if he's go right there. There yeah. you go. 22 million. I could never take 22 million. I, I would feel so. I couldn't sleep at night. I mean, like, I, if I was Dan's comp troller and I took, like, you know, 200 bucks, because, I, because you know, like, Dan, you, if I was your comp troller, you'd never, I, first of all, I would never steal from you ever. But if I was shady and, like, you know, I could, like, maybe say, well, we, we spent 200 extra dollars on some cotton swabs or something like that, like, you wouldn't catch that. But you'd catch, like, you know, 200,000, 22 million to the Jaguars would be, like, probably 200,000 to you or something like that. Yeah. You'd certainly, ca- your accountants would certain. although you did text me a couple of days ago, say you wanted my accountant information because you weren't mm-hmm. happy with yours. No, and I'm in contact with him. Okay. Um, b- Thank you. Uh, Lummy, here's where this Patel guy spent <laughs> $22 million on Jacksonville. Boy, that, 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 that Shaka Khan guy must have more money than he knows what to do with. He gives hard telling what the AE, how much he had to put up for the AEW for his son, Tony Khan. Of the Jaguars to have a little play, like a little play thing. Oh, he's just setting money on fire at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, I heard that it's just, you know, money's no object. Right. <laughs> Which is good. Yeah. Uh, bets on online gambling websites. Brand new Tesla Model Model 3. Oh, that's the jobber one. That's only the foot's only 40 grand. Oh, he's smart. Nissan pickup truck. Membership to country clubs. Two bedroom condo on this Punta Viarda beach. That was worth 265. Uh, personal travel for himself and friends, including chartering private jets, booking luxury hotels, and private rental uh, residences, cryptocurrency, uh, NFT. Let me, are NFTs even a thing anymore? Mm-hmm. The non fungible like tokens? Yeah, not like they were. It's. And then remember the Metasphere, and if you could go, or Metaverse, and you could go and buy, like, you know, you could buy, like, a little lot on Metaverse and try to, you know, make it into a strip yeah, club. Yeah, Kevin Hazel was trying to pitch that for a while. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean that it's still around. It's just not as uh, yeah. It's just not going to make not it. As hot. It's yeah. just not going to make it. I don't think there's as many people burning money as there was five years ago, yeah, four years ago. But, and so trying to find like another novel place to put your money in that's high risk and makes no sense at all is probably being discouraged by people uh, who are smart and have people that are smart advising them. It makes no sense to buy NFTs. I'm glad the NFTs didn't work out. I always thought it was dumb. I it did too. Dumb. I did too. Like, okay, hold on. So you're gonna own this picture of Michael Jordan. You paid, and you only own the di- you own the digital. Well, like, how does the accounting system go for any time that that picture is displayed? If you supposedly owned it digitally, how are you gonna get compensated for that? Like, I couldn't figure out how you get the money back. You know, what someone I'm would buy it from you one day, but it's just I, again, I don't, I don't, I want to look at my art and all my other stuff. I don't want to just have it on. And the- especially you being a card guy, you couldn't. I like when you get a card, you want to be able to touch it, put yeah. it in its little sleeve, get it graded out. Like, exactly. You know, they were right? hawking, they were hawking NFT cards for a long time. Were they really? Yeah, they yeah. sold that down. Uh, let me. I mean, uh, Dan, this is is that Patek? Uh, Patek Philippe. Yeah, Patek Philippe. Is that uh, Nautilus? Is it's that- like dive watch. Yeah, is it, uh, is it's a nice a, watch. Is that a nice watch? It's I mean, a nice watch. I don't like the way it looks personally. That's I, 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 you know, I could have gotten one years ago for a quarter of that, but it's a, it's a super nice watch. Have they retained their value? Oh, they go up, and that's why they're ninety five now instead of twenty five. They used to be twenty five. So wow. now, so that same watch that he that this guy paid ninety five. Five, six, seven years ago was twenty five. Uh, probably about fifteen years ago. Really? Yeah. Um, ha- S- significant jump in value on those watches. Let me here's uh, the Trump saying, uh, "I just use the system." Well, you're supposed to use the system. One thing I do is get rid of carried interest. The one of the greatest provisions for people like me, to be honest with you, I give up a lot when I run because I knock out the tax code. And she could have done this years ago, by the way. She's a United States. She was a United States senator. She complains that Donald Trump took advantage of the tax code. Well, why didn't she change it? Why didn't you change it when you were a senator? The reason you didn't is that all your friends take the same advantage that I do. And I do. You have provisions in the tax code that, frankly, we could change. But you wouldn't change it because all of these people give you the money so you can take negative ads on Donald Trump. But, and I say that about a lot of things. You know, I've, I've heard Hillary complaining about so many different things over the years. Oh, we should have done this. But she's been there for 30 years. She's been doing this stuff. 
She never changed, and she never will change. She never will change. We're getting rid of carried interest provisions. I'm lowering taxes, actually, because I think it's so important for corporations, because we have corporations leaving massive corporations and little ones. Little ones can't form. We're getting rid of regulations, which goes hand in hand with the lowering of the taxes. But we're bringing the tax rate down from 35% to 15%. We're cutting taxes for the middle class, and I will tell you, we are cutting them big league for the middle class. And I will tell you, Hillary Clinton is raising your taxes, folks. You can look at me. She's raising your taxes really high. And what I just can't wait. Hillary's being polite. I like, I like, mm -hmm. I like, oh, I, I like the game, gamesmanship here. Yes. Yes. She, I, I, I'd like to see if, they, if, if this includes her rebuttal. That's going to do is a disaster for the country. But she is raising your taxes, and I'm lowering your taxes. That in itself is a big difference. We are going to be thriving again. We have no growth in this country. There's no growth. If China has a GDP of 7%, it's like a national catastrophe. We're down at 1%, and that's like no growth. And we're going lower, in my opinion. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that our taxes are so high, just about the highest in the world. And I'm bring, bringing them down to one of the lower in the world. And I think it's so important, one of the most important things we can do. But she is raising everybody's taxes massively. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks. So, listen, I, I have to go into <laughs> words because I'm running a little bit late. I, I, I'd love to see her rebuttal, allow me if there is one. Okay. But, but here's the deal. You know why he got elected? It's because look how much more calm he was there. He was actually calm, concise. He attacked her, but wasn't like on attack he kind of you know just threw her he threw her a couple little hard you look know. at this ugmo sitting next to me <laughs> yeah but, but like his you know his debates with biden were combative and i just think i think he needs to go take a look a look at what he how he handled and how the, the swag that he had versus hillary versus the swag and narcissism that he had versus joe but there won't be debates this time. And that, There's right? got to be some kind they, of debate. They, they've got to. There's got to be. But but I, but Seth's right. I've seen where they've said where they're not going to debate. Like they think it's uh, bad, really bad for Biden. Well, I can't see how he's capable of debating. He can't. I mean, he he had one really really good night when he did the State of the Union. I mean, but he hasn't been saying, seen in public in like a week or two. They said he was going to address the nation a couple of days ago, and then he didn't, and he hasn't been seen in public at all. Don't you think that today, or or maybe even yesterday, S Sunday would even be better to have a um, a presidential addresses the union on this you know Iran Israel deal? Don't you think that oh, yeah. most people? I mean, I think that was the plan until most, it was. They just took a look at <laughs> what they have. <laughs> Joe, didn't, Joe didn't wake up so swell. No, they uploaded a video of him walking around the courtyard at the White House, and he's like top heavy. He's walking around like a toddler. It's gonna fall over any yeah. second. I mean, I, I mean I he, he, he needs he needs to get in front of this and not let all of his spokespersons get in front of this. I don't know that he has yet. I don't know that he's came out and no, said he anything. Hasn't. But he just he just told. Uh, I think when the news had come out, there was an early report expecting an attack between Iran and Israel, and his response was, "Don't." Yeah. Yeah. A big one rotor. We'll get. We're gonna get. We're gonna get into that uh, late a little bit later. Uh, technical issues at Coachella. Which just goes to show you, some of these DJs, like, it's so on, like, auto spin, or they don't, and, and I don't want the two DJs that we have on staff to be mad at me, but, you know, it's not like Bad Boy Bill and, 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 and Julian Jumpin' Perez that actually has the vinyl up there, and you can see him spinning. I mean, most of all DJing now is, you know, done from a laptop with these two little turns, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, like, it's not... You don't even really know if they're really playing it like off of the like it just could be a download little little you know USB deal. And this woman shares a child with Elon Musk, I believe. Oh, she does. Grimes, yeah. Yeah, I'll get into that next because I had because unbeknownst to you, I had some unbelievable technical difficulties. I was trying to do a favor for a friend, and I got I I was on the Walter Sterling show. Uh, which I think origin I think it's in, he's heard in New York, Philly, St. Louis, a couple Florida Philly affiliates. It's a Sunday night show by an older guy named Walter Stanley. The real guy is his, his real name is Walter Sabo. He's a radio consultant. He has been always a huge proponent of me. He helped me get my Sirius XM job. 
uh, when uh, he was actually consulting Buck Walden Associates when Howard was looking for the th- two or three dudes that he may want. Walter Sable was a consultant and brought my name up. <clears throat> so, you know, I forever will owe Walter. He's always been a really good friend of mine. And I've, I've always known that he's done a Sunday show, a talk show that's heard. You know, Roger Stone does the same thing. He does a four to six show on WABC out of Indi- uh, out of uh, New York. And then they, they have a whole bunch of affiliates across America. Just, you know, I think... Obviously, Rogers is a a conservative talk show, and Walters is just more of a fun, funner kind of, you know, George Norrie type deal. So he asked me Friday if I'll come on last night's show at 10 p.m. Oh, Oh, come on. You must be dead. I'm I'm dying. Like, please, from Seth to Rhett to, to everybody. Anna, especially, cut me a little bit of a break today because I am dragging ass. I'm trying my hardest. So I had to come in at 930 last night. Mm. And now now thank God for Macho Man because I let Macho Man know about this on Friday. So you already he remoted in and had the Comrex setting. By the way, Macho Man, your your Comrex thing happened. It worked 100 percent like they had me. They had me. You know, and I could, oh, talk, I could, talk, right. I could fantastic, I, and I could talk to him. And so, uh, thank you, Macho. I, I literally had to only go in and click one button on uh, on something that Macho already had up on the screen. So, like that was as simple as can be. So I get here at nine forty. We go on right at ten. Walter Sterling. Now, supposedly he's got like this foot fetish girl out of uh, out of Vegas. That he's interviewing along with me. I don't know. <laughs> I, she got pretty feet. I know. Guys pay her a lot of money to worship her feet. So let me. I'm just going to set it up with that, and let you know about the technical difficulties that I had last night. And please, I'm asking everybody. I'm going to try my hardest to do the best show I can today. But I am absolutely dragging ass. I am so dragging ass. So I went to bed at six. Tried to sleep for a couple hours. Got here, got up at nine nine fifteen. Made it here by nine forty five. Then had then went back home by like eleven oh five, and tried to sleep till three forty five. Did you so. do uh, all of this because uh, he looks like he's a member of the Hall of Fame committee? <laughs> Seth, you're such a dick. Well, I was just looking for the show from last night, and I just kind of learned about uh, Walter Sterling a little bit. Yeah, we'll get on his LinkedIn. It. Right, we'll get us. We'll get, we'll get it. We'll get. It. He's actually a friend of mine. Before, sure, yeah. Before I'd ask him for those considerations, and I told you to lay, you know, be not be good to me today. Not so much ball busting because I'm, you know, not really on top of my game today. No, you're good. I'm on you, cruise control. You're very sharp, Bubba. Thanks. Bruce. I walked in and was like, man, this is gonna be a great show. Bubba's Shut on fire. Up. <laughs> Yes, this is a daily telethon. We gotta keep the lights on somehow. So don't forget PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. All at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Bubba the Love Sponge. We'll be back after this. I saw it too. Oh, you must post. You probably posted like today mm-hmm. sometime. Come on, Sterling. It's not. It's not. It's not going. Sterling Sabo. Walter Sterling. Sterling. I was saying it's restricted in private. Walter. You can get the fucking rumble. Oh, we have problems with rumble. I don't know. It's not working for me. Thank 
I think Rep put up a new a new uh, link. Yeah, he did. So the old one's no good. So I'm just gonna erase the. Well, I mean, I, I probably shouldn't erase the old one. Oh yeah, we're good on that. Until he tells me to. What up, group? We're lips fan Orlando, Nick. We need to do the. Let me see here. Dan. There we go. Just needed to update. Yinzer. That's lovely. Pigs payroll this week, so we really need you guys, you know what I'm saying? Right, Connor Pig. Hello, Bernie. Need a little bit of love. I'm not getting anything on Twitch. With on Twitch either. <laughs> what up, Gary? What's up, Gary? Thank you. That's just not too. What up, Gator? So we got the stuff here now. We got a bunch of shit right now. Alright, kicks are done. It's 2x. Good morning. Got to escape bolts. There's a little slizzing in there. A little bug. Thank you, CC Hall. This is very true. We can make some good money on Friday. Okay. Let me. I don't know that we have. I don't know that we have. All, uh, I don't know what we have this week. I, I don't think we have any. Yeah, uh, check the schedule. Yeah, check the schedule. Let me know. Okay. Kicks for guns to us. What up, Steve? They had a uh, Zenith Blasters. That's interesting. <laughs> Zenith Hobby's like six cards or something like that. Steve, they're going to build me out with that thing like 11 to 1 or 11 to 2. Thanks, Nathan. I concur. The uh, VR Taco, what's up? That's funny. Mm. What's up, JC?
You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Were you sleeping in and missed the first hour of the show? Don't worry. It's all at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Tell me, are we, ha- are we having um, Twitter, are we having uh, Twitch issues? Yes, uh, that's it, the... It was having some problems this morning, and they got to figure out uh, after the show what's going on with it. All right, so no Twitch for today, then. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, every, everything else, Facebook, uh, Rumble, YouTube, X? Everything else, yep. Twitch is the only one. Twitch is the only one? Yes, sir. I, I, I have not gotten anything from PayPal today. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, all at the Bubba Army. Long, I, think, I think we're Dog Dick Willie right now. I got nothing, and I got a message from uh, Cash App, so... Yeah, so and nothing today. It's okay. No. Well, you know, listen, I know I knew I was going to have a little bit of an off day today. I mean, you know, sometimes you go out and you throw, you know, four touchdowns. Or I'm sorry, three, like little Danny did in his flag football game. Or, or other times, you know, let me. Sometimes you throw a pick Dan's six. Sometimes on. you throw a pick six. That's right. Sorry, Dan's on. That. Happens. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe I'll throw a pick six today. I might not be in my bed. I might not throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns, no interceptions. It might be, you know, 210 yards. You know, one touchdown and two picks. One but we got the win, bro. We get the win. Well, we don't know if we don't. We, we got win. We don't know if Go today's on. show is going to win yet, Dan. Okay, we're not even halfway through the first <laughs> yeah. quarter. Yeah, I mean, we're the thirty-one minutes into the show. I mean, we're we're on shaky ground at best. Okay, it's my show. I get the pulse of the show. I know when I walk away at the end of the day and look at the numbers and you know, the views and just the various things that I look at, whether it was a good day or not. There's several things that are factored in. One, just my overall feeling like on um, do i think i was funny to do it today do i think the show was funny today or, or did there's been some days i walk out and be like man that was a waste of my time dude like, you're you bubba know. mahomes man you no, got this no no but, hey, mahomes doesn't go undefeated bitch he almost does okay and even if he loses he loses with style okay, i'm not saying when my show sucks it doesn't suck with style <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's, it will that's suck. all that's how it goes man <laughs> yeah, if I it mean, sucks it's gonna suck with style yeah my show may not be the best today but i'm gonna try my hardest you know, Seth, we could go in at halftime, you know, tied up or down by a field goal, and I got a pick, but then I come out second half and, you know, you know, like from 8 till 10, really I'm on top of it. And then the after show is pretty cool, too. So we do have a lot of room to pull the nose up. We're not down by – we're only down by a field goal. You judge the show based off how you feel about it or how much money it brings in. Well, that has, well, that has another – I mean, that's another intangible. Yes. And that's – you know, there's a couple different things. How much money did this show make? How many views did it gather? And how do I feel inside in my little in my little in my little heart? heart in my little, <laughs> in, my little black heart. in my little pea brain <laughs> how, how I feel. Lummy, we just got um George Erd who's now is that a special name I'm supposed to know? Joe's it's or just brand new money. George Erdman. That sounds like new money. I've, I've never new money. I've, I've never heard Ooh. George Erdman, are, I think it, will you send me a dollar more and just tell me if you're <laughs> if, no hold on if you're new, if you're new money or send me fifty like why don't you send him a dollar back and go hey if you're new money send this back to me oh yeah I guess, I guess, well I guess you're right I, well, I mean I'm just saying you know Man, just, you're really losing your uh, you know what the shakedown this <clears throat> um, there's another word for it but I can't zest. Say it. I'm not saying it zest <laughs> I'm not saying it you oh wrong. yeah the I know oh sorry. Enus. Jewiness. I'll say it because I can. He's losing his Jewiness. Well, I'll get it back because Passover's this weekend, buddy. Well, it is. Start working. Oh, it. Damn it. No. <laughs> I never know. I, I don't know. I'm going no, my mom advice. Can, can I ask you what that means? Like it's a what, holiday. And I, I, a Jewish it's holiday. I know what it means, but what does it mean? Like, okay, in the Jewish ho- in the Jewish religion, Passover equals Passover's like when the uh, Moses led the slaves out of Egypt. That's what Passover is. Sort of. I mean, Central Florida Fishing Channel, oh, 999 Super Chat. By the way, George Erdman said, no, it's my third time that I've given. Oh, oh, but, he, nice. but, but still, that's, that's, pre- yes. that, that's pretty damn near breaking Send us chair. another dollar. Tell us about the other two times. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, but, all at the bubble. I mean, I'll see that. There you go. That, that, that's very. Uh, I'm know, back, baby. You know. Bubba, just it's very like, on brand for you, Seth. See, that's funny. What, Dan? Just like you know, uh, in the in the winter time, we have we have uh, uh, 
Jesus, Hanukkah. God, if you're going to take this much real estate and all eyes are on you, spit it out, bitch. In the wintertime, we have Christmas. The Jewish faith has their Hanukkah. We have in the spring or our Easter, they have their Passover. Oh. So for you, the simple way of remembering it is just to Jewish Easter. Okay. It, what it really means is it celebrates the day that the Jews put blood on top of their front door so that the God, so God would pass over them and not kill their firstborn. And everyone that didn't have the blood over their door, their firstborn son would die that night and it affected mostly the Egyptians. Well, what kind of it wasn't was a God, it was, a, it was an angel, angel death. death. What, what kind of close enough. Right, close Hold on. What kind of <laughs> stupid story is that? Yeah, we would pass over. Oh, so oh. because your savior was behind a rock for three days no, and resurrected, no. that story makes <laughs> no, way more sense. No, no, and no, uh, how many times have I made fun of Easter? How Jesus, you know, you made so, fun of it all, and that's I, what I appreciate I, you exactly. How about you see, like, you know, you're saying, Well, let me tell you something Easter is real and Passover is not. I make fun of both of them. I'd be like, Hold on now. So the angel of death is rolling through the road, and if you got blood on your doorstep, man, he's like, All right, no big deal. But if you just forgot, okay, man, you just forgot because you got a lot going on in your little life, and you forgot to cut your baby's uh, finger off and put blood on the doorstep. His lamb's blood. But... Yeah. Okay, you're, I'm sorry. You, <laughs> it's okay. you, sorry you didn't go out back and, and you know. There's a bunch of nine-figured kids running around. <laughs> <laughs> Cut off your lamb's That's head. That's how they know they were Jews. You know, killed your lamb. <laughs> nine figures. Killed your lamb, got the blood, put it on the doorstep. I mean, you know, I had a pretty tough day today just catching this lamb and quartering it and getting ready to eat it. And just being a slave. Yeah, and being an overall slave. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to put the blood on the doorstep. Now my son? Yeah, You're Tyler's killing dead. my son? Tyler's dead in the morning. Come on now. Mm-hmm. It's about as believable as a dude that, you know, kung fu to rock, kick dude, 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 two dude's ass. And somebody from like up above, this angel, this rock moving angel came in there. Angels to me don't look very tough. You know what I'm saying? They look pretty invisible and, you know, like very. Pussified? Like very paper mache like. You There's know. no tough angels. Yeah, they, you don't see angels just, just are jacked. Dude, they had swords and stuff like uh, what? Michael Shut up, Dan. and got Gabriel and Raphael, the archangels. They were fighters. Oh, sure, Dan. The, I mean, the wings kind of mess with their yeah, formidability. I, I don't believe any of this. The baby wings. I don't believe any of it. <laughs> Whether you're killing my first kid because there's no blood, or you're Jesus and you're in a rock and they had to you know, take this big ass crucifix that they put on your back and they whipped you the entire time and they put some thorns on your fa- on your face and you're uh, had to you sat there and hung and because you're because you're the son of somebody that nobody can see, hey you're the son of nobody that nobody can see and we're gonna blame you for everything, buddy, because that guy in the sky, God, he, why were they mad at Jesus? Like, well, they were I, mad at Jesus because he was a threat to the establishment. Anyone that bucks the establishment in any society for the last 4,000 years has been killed. Kind of like me. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, as far as radio, I'm the Jesus of radio. I'm the Donald Trump Jesus of radio. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, you know, they know that I'm so good. And I could go on any station in Tampa. And with my ensemble now and my brand and just my overall uh, skill set of doing t- spoken word radio, I, I promise you. I promise you, in Tampa, on 98 Rock, and we're number one, men 2554, in less than two ratings, period. Number one. Just because everybody in that age group, for the most part, grew up with me and my, and my various, you know, from, from if they didn't hear me on the Power Pig, then they heard me do mornings on my several, you know, I did mornings on 98 Rock. I did mornings on, you know, The Bone. I did mornings on uh, Bubba 98.7. The, the current morning shows, too, in Tampa Bay are painful to well, yeah. listen to. That in conjunction with just the deterioration of overall morning show ability in the market of Tampa, Florida. No talent. And then you roll in an old time, you know, you roll in Bubba, Mah- Bubba, Bubba Brady. I'm just going to be, I'm just, I'll, I'll bring you a Super Bowl. Throwing dimes. I'll bring you a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. It's, it's locked in. Even Seth and Anna and everybody that thinks they know something about radio, you know this current, this, our current show with our current lineup and our current sound, you know, the just the overall quality of our program versus what's available in Tampa, Florida, you know we'd be probably number one relatively soon. Your show would be very popular no matter where it was blasted out, Bubba. I just, I, I just don't believe in radio enough to think that that's. Oh, I mean, I know, I, and really, realistically, we're, we're making the digital trek that we listen. We are so far ahead of the game. I mean, that iHeart building just started 
trying to get people to sign up for their YouTube like last month. I mean, that's how that's how anti all the digital stuff they were. They wanted everybody to just listen to the radio. Now they're having their radio stations push people to sign up for YouTube. I mean, that's that's very far behind the game for me. I know. It, it seems easier from a from a from a smartphone to get something like YouTube than it is to get radio. And so so many people are out of their car and listening I know, to something. But still, and and I know that we've made the trek to the digital world better than anybody in in this town. And arguably, you know, we've done it probably as good as any other terrestrial show. And, the, and we might be more ahead of any terrestrial show, you know, in in America. We, You know, at, at one time our, when we were, let me, exclusive on Twitch, I mean, now we've spread it out well, we to, spread it out. you know, five or six different deals. But when we were just exclusive to Twitch, I mean, you know, we'd make four or five, six hundred thousand dollars on Oof. Twitch. Now, you know, granted, we have bills and payroll and all kinds of things. Taxes. And taxes. But, I mean, you know, I, I remember uh, one radio personality in particular was like, oh, he's regulated down to a video game. Bubba the Love Sponge is on a video game. And you know what? I guess at the time, circa 2017, us being only on, on, on Twitch and on AM 820, you know, at that point, we... Probably were just on a video game, but it paid. Man, it, it it paid a lot, and and we paid the bills. We were able to keep the show together, keep the building, pay the mortgage, and continue to grow and figure out that digital is where you gotta be. So I mean, we we actually you know actually are you know one of the very few that incorporates our terrestrial show digitally. But we do do a lot of exclusive things digital, digitally, you know, like like the podcast world. I think you get four or five, you know, like uh, you know, exclusive things, pieces of programming that you can only get on our podcast world. Like you cannot get them on our YouTube or our Rumble or our or our Twitter uh, or our Facebook. You can't, you know, you the content. There's four or five different pieces of exclusive content that are podcast only driving true Bubba Army fans to the podcast world which has been going well between two live Jew and operation pigmentation skigmentation hmm. and uh you know just me Clem and Kush uh the Monday show did I say two live Jew yeah yes. two mm-hmm. live Jew uh so yeah it's uh the podcasting world really really is starting to take off uh, you guys know our rumble our you know we hit a hundred thousand on YouTube I mean, I don't know that any other radio personality in this and in, in in Florida, for that matter, that has that type of following on their YouTube channel because they've not been allowed to repurpose their show on YouTube because they don't own the rights to their program. For Linda Fennel, twenty five on the Venmo. So the show that they've done, they don't own. Now some have just now. Have you just noticed now, uh, you know, Seth, that a few of these personalities are now saying, "Oh shucks, we better start doing some stuff on on YouTube. We better start offering our our content on YouTube." Yeah, I mean the show that, just, that I just started. The show that I left when I worked at uh, I don't know AM six twenty. They just started streaming their show on YouTube every single morning now. Yeah, imagine so. that. <laughs> I mean, and there's other ones, you know, that are doing it as well. And we're like, you know, the the the, the best at it with with regards to our numbers and, and, and everything like that. So, I mean, I'm uh, I'm excited. That's you know, that's that's again. I think I could come in on my on my one my worst programming days and still just kill every because radio in Tampa. Is, let's just be honest, it sucks. It's oh, and, you today, know, yes, it's, it's in, horrible. In Orlando, it's to, in Orlando, it sucks. You don't have anything to listen to. What do you got, Rick Stacy, some old top forty guy out of Atlanta? I know Rick. I'm not saying anything bad about you, but you're you know you got kind of a zookeeper kind of deal. He, 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 Rick Stacy is the MJ of Atlanta. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry of, of Orlando. Oh damn, is he hiring? Uh, what? <laughs> You might want to go check their number. I think it's I think it's um I forget what station it is in Orlando. It's the it's the mix. I think okay. It's I think it's the mix. One hundred five point one. That or it's the match. It's either the magic or the mix. Bunch one of, of the two. Guys. Let me type in Rick Stacy Orlando. Right. He's, this is the number one rated morning guy in all of Orlando, and it's just it's like that. It's like a it's like literally a zoo. One hundred five point nine. 
Sunny FM. Sunny. I'm sorry, Seth. They're sunny. Oh, God. You can be a magic. <laughs> you can be magic. You can be a dove. You can I be... mean, that's where they play you in dentist uh, office and stuff. Like, that's where you, you really get the sunny. groupies. Sunny. Lummy, can you send me, just in all fairness, in yeah. all intellectual fairness, send me a Rick Stacy Sunny FM air check. Hell, he might even be live right now. I, sent you, I just sent you the website. I'll find, try to find an air check for it. Or they might, on the, on the website, they might they have, have a listen live. Yeah, listen live deal. We could listen to this. I mean, Seth, why not listen to our competition? Right? I'm down. This mm-hmm. is the number one. I mean, listen, we're this, we're this guy's bitches. The Rick Stacy Morning Show, they're number one. Let me see here. Hey. Well, it says listen live. All right, listen live. Hold on here. And where, okay, uh, oh, it's it says it like does it want to know? Well, now hold on. This takes this takes me to the Audacity Listen Live landing page that has every station. Boy, this would be almost funny to listen to how bad all of top radio. You know, all <laughs> all of them. You, they give them to all to you right here. Let me see them. I know it's like, not on my screen. Like I can listen. Oh, it's not on your screen. Yeah, mm-hmm. let me show it to you guys over here. Look, this is the. Uh, I oh. think when you go for go when you go to Sonny's. Like, let me show you, let me. This is Sunny from Orlando. Yeah. The, is this the company the George Ra- Soros just bought? Yeah. Oh, yes, really? yes. Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey. The Rick Stacy Morning Show. Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. Uh, every weekday mornings, Rick, Jill, and Smokestack make your ride to work and start your day more fun than a, a gang of rabid squirrels. That's Man. a nice comparison. Cool. That is, I mean, there. Because that's Zoink. fun. A, ra- a gang of rabid squirrels. Zoinksville. Is fun. Zoinksville. Right now, hooked on a feeling is playing. Uh, hooked on. So listen. So if you go to Glisten Live, it then go, gives uh, Audacity, Odyssey, it gives you all their radio stations in America to listen to. Oh, we're going to have it. This is a treasure trove of. of, of of, of potential uh, content. It's going to be all commercials and music. Each, I don't each know. Let me, let me, what station? No, what station? What station? 105.9 Sunny FM. Okay, where's it? Okay, it's music, news talk. Um, let me, I can't. You'd have to put in find stations. You'd have to type it in, it looks like. Uh, oh, so they okay. give you a website with that station, but you still can't find so, it. So it says listen live. Oh, wait, Bubba, if you go d- click the uh, click that orange listen. Right okay, there. right here, yeah. listen live. Okay, this is the number one. This is number one rated show in Orlando, and we're like in 31st right now, okay? Here we go, live. We might as well listen to what the... I I don't want to create an I don't want to create an account. You shouldn't have to... Okay, let me just listen to him live oh, here. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was oh, you my bells and bong. bong. I got you. No, yeah, that's not. Sh- Smokestack! Well, I'm glad we we talked about this twice. By the way, music music underneath them, that means you know you can't have you can't be dry. Most radio personalities have to have a little bit of music behind them. Bong feces. He says, I got a bell. It's too I late. Do. It's too late now. It's all about t- 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 timing. <laughs> He's still looking to look though. There you go. There you- Great. Real funny now. It's our competition. High school student in Baldwinsville, New York, has re- sorry, <laughs> has reportedly been arrested after get this. He sent a fax to the to the uh, you know the district office as the principal resigning. Oh, he was like <laughs> pranking, pretending yeah. to be the principal. According to multiple, and this is real Zoinksville stuff, ain't it? That Charles W. Baker High School was arrested Good arrested man. after sending a bogus fax on behalf of the principal. What do you got? The complete sheet there? You're reading? Oh, <laughs> why really? did they arrest him? You arrest him? Oh, Zoinksville! Why'd they get arrested? Defense? Can't you just slap him on the wrist and be Look, like, this, "Yeah, this is New York. You can walk into a, a, a Dwayne Reed and steal nine hundred dollars worth of crap, uh-huh. and you don't get arrested." Doesn't he sound very MJ like that? Doesn't he sound very MJ? Suddenly, yep. you're arrested. Hang on, hang on. What are you doing? He's I got a fax coming in. Uh, it's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, now, who sends a fax these days? That should have been their first clue. Oh, they had the fax machine sound effect. Yeah. There you go. That's his link, sir. Smoke What was the of charge? It. Pretending to be the principal. Impersonating the principal. It was what? Is that a, illegal? He's charged with criminal impersonation. What criminal impersonation? It's not like he had anything to gain by it. You know, it's just amazing. I, you I kick know. the crap out of two cops. You go into the police station for an hour, you're out the back door. You send a fax as a prank, resigning as the principal of a school, and you're arrested. He's probably still in jail. How old is this kid? He's 17. 
Come on. Okay. I saw this over the weekend. Um, the C Morning Zoo on C100. I'm sorry. I mean, do I, how much more of the Zoinksville uh, radio do you have to listen stuck to? In traffic so that you know that? that really, honest to God, realistically, this is. One of the shows that sound like this are some of the most highly rated shows across various, you know, Indianapolis, you know, Grand Rapids, Tampa, Orlando, you know, Miami, Jacksonville. They got that local zookeeper like show and the majority of them sound like this. You got a lead guy who reads news stories. You got like a you got your little Seth Kushner over there to throw in a few Zoinksville, which is his smokestack. And then you got one chick uh, which is Anna, who sounds a little bit cuter and is a little less Jewish Just thought uh, her than, than Anna. And that's it. You got two guys. That's 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 the template, and that's all you got. And like they're not like. I mean, let me look at look, look at. We got me. We got you. We got Dan. We got Jay. We got Anna. We got Bl- we got uh, Seth. We got Rhett. We got Macho Man. We got like seven people. Real engineers, real drama. We got dumb guys. We got doctors. We got Jewish people. We got fat white guys. We got bodybuilders. We got a ginger. <laughs> I mean, my God. We got range. I mean, we got, we got, we got range, bitch. Over, let's see what they're doing. Let's see if, Space to constant. Oh, I'm back to another Zoinksville news story. Yep. <laughs> You like, you know, you're a pussy or a snowflake of a man. If you don't listen to a real man show like me, I got a real man show going on. We talk about real manly stuff. Or even when we do talk about pussified snowflake and woke stuff, we make fun of it in a manly type way. You're a real pussy if you listen to this and consider yourself a man. Why don't you <laughs> call and go live oh, alive? Jimmy, will you look at those? Let's try to focus on the... Ha <laughs> ha. Mm, me likey. I can see everything. Totally see-through, Jimmy. Yes, but fortunately, we're professionals and... And they're running. Look at them run. I am feeling lightheaded, Jimmy. Right. Now let's go to the <laughs> Swedish high jumpers and... No, we will stay right here. Don't you take this from me, Jimmy. Yikes. Oh. More action from the Olympics coming up. Wait. Everybody! Stream the Rick Stacy Morning Show at 1059sunnyfm.com. Bubba, no, was that, that like a taped bit? That, yeah, that was a taped bit. Oh, my God. Taped bit of somebody trying to do like an Olympic play by play, and then mm-hmm. one perverted color, the, you know, the straight man was trying to do, and then the, the, color, the color commentator, he was Johnny touching himself. You know, but, I mean, like that, 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 that was their bit. That stuff. That was their bit. Yeah, they won't go live on live, will they? No, we're, and we're not even like, I don't even have that mentality mm. of going live on live anymore. I'd be like, listen, hey, Rick, you know it's me, Bubba. I'm an absolute legend in this market. You know that my show doesn't sound as stupid stupid and campy as yours. You know, I've had, you know I've had success everywhere I've gone. I've been syndicated as many as 31 radio stations overall. Uh, and I was the afternoon drive guy for Howard uh, Stern on Sirius XM at the you know start of that uh, for five years. And you know, you know, I am a far greater radio legend and have more skill set, and my show is way different than yours. And you should be a little concerned now that somebody like me and Shannon Burke and my buddy Don Miller. Florida Man Radio have come in to give the people of Orlando an alternative to the stupid zookeeper stuff that you and your stupid ass show and your stupid ass company and all your stupid ass other shows. The C Morning Zoo on C100. You know, you're the only guy that's really allowed to talk because you're the program director and you are the most successful. You're the most successful day part on Sunny, but Sunny, others, others day part. They just play music like on a, you know, like a lot of times they'll make the midday girl of the morning show stay. I'm sorry, the girl portion of the morning show. They'll have to stay over in today's cutting of radio. You know, they're just cutting talent. Yeah, they, they do that at the bone. <clears throat> yeah, so that girl has to do middays or they will. They'll AI her. A lot of these mm-hmm. adult contemporary has AI for the midday chick, and then they got some dude that's or been just soundtrack, yeah. Then they got some dude in the afternoon, like Mason Dixon, that's been there for like you know twenty five years, and he's just giving you like uh, ten or eleven songs per hour, and he's just you know living off of his at, you know past you know at, f- formerly a pretty recognized jock accolades. 
<clears throat> or they AI it, <clears throat> or they'll voice track it in from another city. Like, there's a lot of that. Like, Big Ronnie Michaels on 98 Rock is heard, like, on 46 other stations. He does afternoons, and he just voice tracks it. So he'd be like, you know, 98 Rock, uh, don't forget, uh, we got livestock this weekend, and uh, here's uh, Seether on 98 Rock. And then he goes, okay, you guys still rolling? Yeah, okay. Syracuse's Real Rock Radio, 106.9, The Buzz. Uh, don't forget, Syracuse, this weekend you got uh, Rib Fest down there at Syracuse Park. Uh, more information, keep it right here on the rock of whatever the hell I said. And, then, and he literally cuts like 30 of those. That's the way it should be. And, and that's, he cuts 30 of them. And then he'll, cut, he'll have to do four breaks an hour. So he'll cut 30... You know, 30 different breaks. You'll take, how many breaks? That's, 100 and, that's like 400, 500 breaks you got to cut. It's because you got to be able to customize them. I mean, see, Seth, I think, I think he doesn't have to cut that many breaks. I think he has to cut like two customs per hour, and the other ones can be pretty, like, non city specific so that they can use it for any, you know, you can cut one that used for all cities. And yeah. Then, and then you just, like, maybe personalize your, you know, two of the four that you cut are personalized, you know, in the city. They give you some something to talk about in the city. I got know. bad news, Bubba. I don't know how it goes, man. I, don't, I haven't listened to the radio in a long time. Well, what's your bad news? Did uh, you, I don't listen to the radio, so I don't oh. really know. I don't know what's so going on. So get ready for all the spring fun now. Visit PetMeds.com and use promo code PODCAST to save 40 40- Let me. I need to go to that other page where I can listen to some real zany people. Oh, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me do some words. I'm going to see if we can find some. I mean, you know, just, you know what we sound like. It's, it's fun to listen to others, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I mean, is, I mean, is this something that you? I, I, I like it because no other radio stations do this sort of things. No other radio station has the ball. Like, there's no other radio station I can think of right now that's syndicated terrestrially that would that has the balls or the creativity. Or does you know, or corporates not going crazy for them to be able to go and listen to other companies' uh, radio stations right. and, and broadcast them on your airways? Right. I don't know that any other morning guys are getting to do this kind of stuff. No, you're so, so that low. means we need to do it, Seth. That makes sense to me. I mean, as a, as a uh, as somebody that I value in and uh, in, in with regards to the knowledge of radio and you know production and producing. And content creating, <clears throat> you think you think you think it's cool. I'm cool with listening to other shows. I just don't want you to yearn for their jobs because I just think you're in a better position oh, than no, all no, of no, them. Oh no 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 no! I'm not. These listen. Thank you for you know what. Thank you for the clarification. I'm not going to listen to these guys in lieu of saying, man, uh, you know, WFB they ought to hire. A, no, I'm not going to do it under the guys that because because we we automatically know that I'm better than they are. Period. Mm-hmm. So we we're got we got that going in. So I don't have to champion for their jobs. I just want to play them. Yeah. Because so, may, maybe, I mean, we sit here and think that we're all that, right? My, my nipples hard and everything. Ooh. But I mean, what if we listen to somebody that you know is like, wow, they're pretty good. Their their girl sounds better than Anna. Their host doesn't sound nearly as stupid as Bubba. Oh, their doctor's smarter than their. I see. That's where we get you. Because, see, you guys ain't got a doctor. Nobody's got a doctor. No radio station could afford to have a doctor. And two Jews. A doctor? (laughs) We got a doctor and two Jews. Come on now. Rick Stacy ain't got that. If you want 24-7 on-demand Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. Oh my god, there's a station in Tampa 1039 the boot? What? These there was just it was just up. Go scan one more over. Uh, the yeah. The boot. I never even heard of that. Was that the Spanish station? I think it's country, is it? It is now. I didn't know. Oh no wait, Hill Maxima's still there. Hey Parker, take her. No, but I've never heard of 1039, even that frequency. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'll apologize your hair in the bathtub. I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't know. I, did, did the FCC I grant a new one? Yeah. Man, the boot's the only know. station I've heard dumber than the bone. If nerve center and 
Do you want me to send us a, their air check? You want to send us an air check, Bubba? What? Want me to send the booth our air check? No, no. Come no. on, dude. If we got on the booth, dude, it would be really be what we need. I can't get the boot to come up. How do you poop up a wall? This is how iHeart Automation does it. Whatever the station's name is, you know, the open, the edge. So they only cut this part, and Automation puts that, plays that, plays that, and plays that all over the song. That's how they do it nowadays. Really? Yeah. So they only have to cut the meat. So sometimes it sounds choppy. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah you, wow. Wow. But that's what they're trying to find. <clears throat> wow. But my <clears throat> buddy in Atlanta does it. He does like fucking a hundred some stations. He's in his basement just cutting all day. I don't know how he does it. Oh. But it's the same shit, you know. Inventory, customer service, and more. Start your order for business. You keep it all connected for just forty nine ninety nine a month. Get fast, reliable internet, advanced Wi-Fi with security shield, and a free mobile line for one low price. Stay connected and do it all with Spectrum One for Business. Only $49.99 a month. Go to spectrum.com slash business to learn more. Restrictions apply. Service is not available in all areas. I can that oh. You know what's nice about working with Farrah and Farrah? We focus on your injury case around the clock, so you can focus more time on you. Yes, Farrah and Farrah. Here to make it easy. Tampa. Now open in South Pasadena, Kelly's Roast Beef. For the first time ever, enjoy this iconic Boston area restaurant in your backyard. Bite into a legendary thinly sliced melt-in-your-mouth roast beef sandwich. Dive into a generous platter yeah, of New England seafood. Like Everything is fresh. It's really my good weekends. <laughs> Kelly's Roast Beef is right, now open. There. Visit kellysroastbeef.com for more info. Or check them out on Instagram at Kelly's Roast Beef FL. More locations opening soon. Dude, for the first time in 15 months, I have health insurance. Yay! And how happy are you right now? I'm going to get blood work today, baby. That's right. <laughs> oh, fucking. I fill up eight vials. Let's go. Credit card, medical, Let's find out what's going on. it up, baby. Let's bring it out. Let's find out what's going inside these fucking sexy ass Why? epidermi of mine. And let's fix them while we can. That's right. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's find it and fix it on them. On Same. them. Well, I'm not sure my copay is today. But well, still, but it's. And I'm a little light till payday, but things will work out. What up, DDP for life? What was the diamond cutter? Was that like a DDT or something? Oh, thank my wife, Jay Gator. She, she got the insurance. <laughs> Clem does have a health plan. I'm just not on it. It's his own. stare down a stare down no I did a soccer break this weekend though Aston Villa I got some autographs from that team I don't know shit I need somebody to help me with uh with soccer I don't know any I got some good cards I just don't know if they're good or not 
Looking up each individual one is painful. Oh, yeah. Local hobby shops are giving out some hockey cards. Dards. <laughs> Alpha man that wears women's deodorant. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Uh, listen, follow our uh, our Twitter slash X. There's a lot of great stuff. Uh, I'm in the middle. I've kind of really taken it upon myself. I mean, I got a little. I got a little lax on uh, on Saturday and Sunday. My numbers are down a little bit. My activity was down a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, we're trying to hit a certain number, and the way I'm doing it, it's working. Yes. And so, uh, what about the other content like that that I added this weekend of uh, you know Babyface and then Danny Junior with three touchdowns? Yes. People love it. I, I, that's why I've asked you guys. Yes, I'm the most active, but you by all means jump, double dutch your ass in there and throw some stuff down, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no. I realized we were tweeting at the exact same time yesterday. <laughs> who cares? <laughs> who cares? You're right. Or, I mean, who cares? It'll slot itself up and people can go watch it. Let so, it eat, Cuzzo. Yeah. You can listen, our our Twitter is at the Bubba Army. Real quick, I'm on uh, uh Odyssey's like all station listen page and and they were just this is uh oh, oh. This is Seattle. This oh. is their ro- this is what they call oh, their this is ro- brass monkey. Well, I I understand. I understand. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, 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 uh. Brass monkey. 99.9 KISW. Back out of them and then go over to the new what the new K E. Here we go right here the new the new one zero two seven W N E W out of New York. I would think they'd have kind of like a maybe like a M J Zookeeper kind of show maybe wouldn't you think? It's a, oh, yeah. it's <laughs> a hot uh, adult contemporary. Yeah, they're gonna have like uh you know who Karen Carson. Is, that? is that is that? Oh, oh, they they got to give me a. Free roll. Skip ad. Okay, here we go. Travis Kelsey almost, he looks like the the oh, whole. I guess I got the girl giving news. All right, now listen. Yeah, and he just envelops her. No, so they always have music underneath them. Always. They mm-hmm. can't do it dry. They're so, most radio people are so afraid of dry. Top 40, you got to do You got to do it. Well, the top rate's only like seven walked. minutes. Did you oh. notice Taylor Swift was wearing Travis Kelsey's hat? Oh, it's a New Heights po- there, there's po- the sno- podcast there's title. The snowflake. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh my so we got God. the girl, She's the snowflake. The Travis Kelsey let's get the, let's get the host. It's so funny. Cute. Everything they do is is news. But I never thought that I would see Taylor Swift in a regular crowd. That's what I'm concerned Ever about. What were again. they thinking? <laughs> what, were, what were they thinking just walking amongst people? That's, that's the snowflake. To Man, this it. is like the and top 40 show I was on. Two him. girls and a gay really? guy. Yeah. 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 huge compared to her. Two girls and a gay guy. <laughs> I have more appreciation that they called it that. Cute because he put her on her sho- his shoulders oh. so she could, you know... Like a normal date. Imagine being the person behind them, though, because Travis Kelsey's pretty tall. Taylor Swift is pretty tall. I know. Together, they're 14 feet. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. The person behind them at Coachella? <laughs> you right. a ladder. The extravagant gay guy. They have, like, security, though, in regular people clothing, standing around like the Secret Service. They have to. You know, like, like Seth, he's that kind of feminine-leaning... You know, yeah, well, you know, he's I a, wonder how Travis. He, you know, the ladies love him. He's, he's the safe, to, but he's kind of the token gay guy, right? I, I would so say it leans that way. So he's, 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 he's got to kind of talk feminine, kind of little flim. You know, he's got to mostly. Yeah. I played his nice role on the radio many bitchy. times. Look, he's got to act. He's kind of got to act male, bitchy. Right. Right. You need your wingman, I guess. And then also at Coachella, which I think is so cool, is Gwen Stefani reunited with No Doubt Ooh. on Saturday night. She's the coolest chick in the world. The head of a ska band from California. I remember when I first like started hearing of No Doubt. They are so badass. I've seen them play at Jones Beach. Gwen Stefani puts on like a Broadway show. They do like set changes and outfit changes. And then she- again, it's us listening to other radio around uh, you know our country. That's the number one market in the <laughs> and, country, and by listen, the way. This is the number one market in the in America, and this is their. Their big hit morning show. Walking in, I, like Bieber and Haley walked in right before Taylor Swift. Bieber, like, it's so not manly. Or he, he's so sick of the paparazzi. I feel like so everybody in his. I got to think that even chicks would think this was too bitchy. Being there was <laughs> like not really New York. A surprise, I think you got to understand. Right? 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 Right
I want to know what's going on with Justin Bieber. Yeah, something's going something's on. Something's going on. Something's going on, but, you know. I feel for him. He got, he got so tortured George Soros as a kid. just bought you know? this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all this is what George Soros is he's all about. like eight or nine. Every mistake he ever Taylor made, Swift. there were photographers there to capture. Show it. I just want to hear, hear them. Be quiet. Uh, you know what you really should watch if you get a... I just love to hear me interact. interact it's his... His the first movie, the documentary. Yeah. yeah, we bought we bought it for the kids, and then both of us are like, "Whoa!" We got sucked in right away. Everybody so, went it, to see that with their purple hoodies on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> All right, internet. After the show, come on over. You and I will watch Never, Never Say, Say Never. Never. How come I'm not invited? You, you watch it again. So it's almost two gay. I think it's two gay guys and a girl. Oh, oh well, bring the popcorn. Let's it's go. It's really good. Love Beaver because of that. Anyway, it's time for Campy Karen. So call now 800-949-1027. and you'll win uh, if you're chosen to play a pair of tickets to see Maroon 5 at PNC Bank Art Center, Homedale, New Jersey on June 29th. This is from our friends at Live Nation. You can go to livenation.com to buy tickets or uh, call right now and try to play Campy Karen. Also, a Campy Karen mug. And that is brought to us by Empire City Casino. Where They're new. That's their game, Campy Karen. Beat me, $102 winning mug. It's all fun. Call now, 800-949-1027. Find Tropical. Spectrum Business works with small business. And then into, and then into commercials. And she's kind of the lead mm-hmm. with the two gay guys as the little bitches in the background. That's oh. how I kind of figure. I mean, that's, that, that's the feel that I got. What, what, what kind of feel did you all get? A similar Same. feel. It seems that, you know, a... a, a Classic guy, a stereotypic guy is dead in the Northeast. So yeah, it's, no, it's no, I mean, we have shows like this in Tampa. It's just their audience is not our audience. And I, think I, about who owns the show. Soros. His, the last thing he wants is a classic guy. Well, I mean, yeah, that the, is la- the, the last thing he wants is a guy like me. Right. That is, you know, doesn't probably skew politically the way he skews. Right. He's uber liberal oh listen we uh we could listen to uh some talk radio seth instead of listening to this you know oh yeah you got the sports stations right up there and then yeah you're on news and talk right now all right so i mean i gotta think i find i find a real legendary one i'm gonna go into words and then i'm gonna find like a real legendary one that i've heard of before um let me see uh kcbs but that's that'll be three hours behind us but what about like uh, sports? Oh, do you want to do news? Oh, how, well, I want to. I want to. I want to probably do sports because I, that would. You, that's because the, there's WFAN. There's a score out of Chicago. You yeah. got more legendary there stations. Go. Let's do that. This is the number WFAN, which is legendary. If you know anything about radio, it is. Oh, well, I, I guess I got to get. If out I would have kept making oh, only the minimum payments Sorry. on my credit cards, my. This is the most exposure Odyssey's had in quite some time. <laughs> yeah. uh, KFAN. I think if if anybody knows anything about radio, it's one of the legendary um, uh, sports talkers in America. It's like uh, when you know it, sports talk radio has just recently become very very popular. But prior to that, it was usually one station, you know, one station in the market, the one pro, you know predominant station of the market that carried all everything. That's been KFAN in New York City. You know, like KFAN has been. It, it's the legendary sports. It's where all the stars come. I think I said we're Boomer. And, so this is the, Boomer, Seth, yeah. this is the best of the best. This is the best of the best. It's supposed to be. I, I think it, it came across, Mark, I, what, I, I think what this is their morning show. Do was <clears throat> he's probably heard throughout the years people saying, how come you didn't come? Boomer and Geo. Really had to go to the Yankees. That hurt. Boomer Esiason and Geo McGillicuddy. There you threw a no-hitter and you won a World Series. And I think that Doc was trying to say, it wasn't my choice to not come back here. I wasn't trying to screw with you guys. I wasn't mm-hmm. trying to to make you angry. I was just told I wasn't allowed. And you know what? Sports is so much easier to do because you have something that you have to talk about. Yeah, like, but you can't stray from it, Bubba, or people right. get mad. Exactly. So, so it, like, you're just locked in. You'd much rather talk about the guy, honest to God, that's sharpening the skates for the Bruins than talk about what's happening in Israel right now. That's <laughs> true. Am yeah. I right? No, you're right. The guy, the guy that's lining the field for the Boston College, for, I don't know, for the Giants, the, the groundskeeper for the Jets and the Giants will be our next guest. But we're not going <laughs> to talk about uh, the way Iran just invaded Israel. No way. But we'll have the guy that does the the, the first down markers for 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 the Jets next, Ooh. right? That's how it is. Hey guys, um, 
big fan. With a bunch of callers saying, hey, oh, man, big fan of the show. And then every dude has an opinion as to what's happening in their sports town. Like, Seth, you, you, if you're driving downtown right now, you, you would have an opinion with regards to the Lightning approaching playoffs. And they might play, you know, they might match up against the Bruins, how they match up. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you have that opinion. Yes. <laughs> And it's like a chain. You know, I had a friend that worked there. And For real? They had him in Boston. Yeah, there was one in Sea Caucus. It was called Bazookas. And it was the same type of thing, like scantily clad waitresses oh, and bartenders? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, but it was, it was, oh, boy. It was more. The guy, said, the guy actually said, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Bazookas. Do you, you guys remember? Bazookas. I don't know. I bazookas. do remember bazookas. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. <laughs> Are they all closed now? All the bazookas? Uh I don't know. I, it's uh, I'm not sure to be honest because there's no bazookas. website for it. Yeah, at least no website comes up. Bazookas rep, uh, Harmon Co, uh, Harmon Meadow Boulevard in Secaucus. I mean, we're listening. To, hey, <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about we're, bazookas. We we are Jeez. listening to them and they're talking about bazookas. So I don't know who's more pathetic, them or us. Me, I don't we're, know. I mean, it's hard. Go to enough. Rob and Danbury. What's going on, Rob? Rob and Dan Barry. How we doing? Hey, great, Rob. What's up? The easiest radio in the world. Me and Seth could do this in our sleep and have the number one sports talk show in Tampa. Guaranteed. Don't know, well, pretty what? much how we do the podcast. Blocks over from that was a bar and grill named Fun Bags Bar and Grill. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now, oh, they're gonna yeah. have, now they're gonna have everybody call in and talk about all the <laughs> you know all all the interesting male sports skewing bars they have in their pissant little towns that are not you know not re- you know not New York like, yeah exactly <laughs> it's, it's hard enough listening to professional athletes talk about athletics and sports and and be wrong all the time i actually it's think, so painful to listen to just people calling in that have absolutely I, I, no fund of knowledge commenting on sports Seth, with what regards to where to with what, what, what regards we are looking for as far as kind of a men skewing talk show not regu- not necessarily news not necessarily sports but just kind of a man skewing talk show i think we're if there is any of that at all within the uh, uh, odyssey lineup i think it would probably be more likely to get it on one of these rock stations absolutely that they, that they have you yes know, you know for sure so <clears throat> let me uh let me and see. classic rock yeah not the alternative stuff that i'm into right the manly stuff the, yeah so like do you think alt 92.3 in new york they would have a, a, uh, a, a guy show, or are they going to be just kind of the Is that Howard same... Stern's old station? No. Uh-uh. 92.3? Um, yeah, it might It might be. I think they rebranded it. Of course. And now it's, it's, it's I got I to I get, get rid of Boomer. Oh, Jesus. Okay, go back. Come on, Boomer was doing good with bazookas. I mean, I'm, I have to click off a of Boomer. Okay, click off Boomer. now. Okay, now back to that. Listen live. Uh, let me see. Okay, let me see. What's this. Boomer making? Like five million a year? <clears throat> oh God, at least. Yeah. The Kansas City one, Bubba. The Rock. The That's rock. Johnny. Yeah, but I'm. But it, 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 is that Johnny Dare? Yeah. Okay. So this is this guy here, uh, Seth. He's kind of the Bubba the Love Sponge of Kansas City. <laughs> okay. His name's Johnny Dare, and uh, I, I. He's pretty talented. And I would say that this is probably going to be the clo- closest thing that we would like. That would probably be a little bit more towards what we do is Johnny Dare. And let me, I think he's been there. Now with the MLB app, you can. I think he's been there for. Since 93. Yeah. Oof. He's the Bubba the Love Sponge of uh, of Kansas City. Wow. And, and, he's, and he's still, you know, I'm the Bubba the Love Sponge of Tampa, but I'm not Bubba Love Sponging Tampa very good right now. <laughs> as far as, you know, being the man. I think Johnny Dare had did not mess up his career like I did, and he's not been putting a timeout. <clears throat> I think he's been, can, you know, like as if I hadn't gotten trouble, Seth, I'd really still be just killing it. You know that. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Hey, parodies now, Bubba. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like mine that are short. A minute 30, yeah. right? Good 
See, I think our, our our parody songs are funny regardless if you know who Ryan is or not, but theirs is like it's too, uh, you too up early today because you missed yeah, us or go. because Nikki had to have a day off. Yes. You. This, oh, this is very much like us, guys. Here we go. In your other two jobs. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So that you could you could come in today this morning. You are the luckiest man I've ever met. I am. Life. You're I not you. Flat. Didn't you just get a brand new jet? Uh, we don't have it yet, but we closed on it. So it's ours. We're just waiting on it to get here. Can you say what kind it is or no? Yeah, it's a Citation XLS. Oh, yeah. Beautiful airplanes. Who's that? Saw it after a <laughs> corporate jet out there. And you'd be flying that? Yes. And you tested out on it? Uh, a couple weeks ago, yeah. I've, I've already been to training, got my type rated. So I've been flying somebody jet. else's in the meantime. Got a jet mm. pilot on our show? To get here. We're just waiting I, on a part. I mean, they may out uh, not us. We got a doctor. <laughs> they got a jet pilot. Talking to you like we all know what it's like. <laughs> the hell? Citation what? XLS. XLS. I've, I can't tell you how many of my friends I've watched I mean, you have to go through that tedious testing and, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, registered with it and knowing uh -huh. that they've got to, you know, everything Johnny goes Johnny Dare go through something like, traumatic with his throat or is he just uh, getting old? Was, yeah. yeah, well, of course, yeah. all of us. Doesn't he sound old? He sounds yes. rugged. Yeah, he does. <laughs> a week. I thought yours was three days. So. Oh, no, no. Yeah. no. When, you're, when you're like us, it just takes a week to get it all the way through. It's a lot to live. You know, it, it is. It's a lot to work through, man. Yeah. It's just it's, you know, to come to know. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy, Ryan. You know, I know. I know. It's a, I know. Just, I mean, you've been flying all these hours. You've you've clocked all of this untold time, but yet you new new jet, new training. That's you right. To, you have to get you have to get you know because it's not all the same. We know that exactly. You yeah. know that. It, I know that. Yeah. Come on, get to it, Johnny Dare. You know that. Yeah. Well, so, you know, all yeah. these. You know, just. <sighs> Somebody on your show got a new jet. Let's move on. <laughs> Ryan and I are talking about you dummies listening to this radio show. Yeah, don't yeah. You, make it condescending. You, Come I on. just <laughs> wouldn't know what it's like to be a jet captain. But you know, well, here we go. you do you. You do stuff well. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking to anybody except you, the listener. <laughs> Good God, man! What's a plane yeah. like that run? Uh, if it, if it, what would it cost new? Brand new, oh boy, it's probably like eight or nine million. Yeah. So, yeah. Ish. Ish. Uh, all right, so there you go. I think maybe we should go to words. Who's more pathetic, us <laughs> listening to them? Yeah. Or us listening to them, then going into words? It's always us. <laughs> it's always <laughs> us. If you want to deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge show. We'll be back after these words. Oh, now they're playing airplane drops. <laughs> These guys are great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And then I went to Nashville before that, so I'm I'm kind of kept building time in somebody else's plane while we're waiting. So you just you when you're testing out for that and you're and you're working your way through getting yourself familiar, you just go fly free for them in order to exchange for the hours. Or do you uh, get you actually so, paid to play somebody else? Yeah, I get paid to fire. So, well, we, we actually, uh, Thursday <laughs> last week, and I didn't write down, we, we rescheduled him to next Monday. You had me rescheduled right. him, so. All right. So it's next week. Yeah. Too so short? Yeah. Yeah, we're just trying to get paid to That's horrible, man. Huh. 
Why do they have a guy that's like nine out of mine? It's hard to be able to be able to be It really is, isn't it? I'm telling you. Like, oh, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> but he, he would be the, he would be the, actually he's the trustee. Is the one that, 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 that takes out the, the, the those <laughs> the one. And the other one the the day, uh, our friend Rudy Reyes was shot by Rudy Reyes. What up, LM? Thank you for the operator. Uh, no, the but they do a similar thing to trustee. The trustee is the one that actually runs it from then on. The executor is like maybe like doing the actual probation of the probator alone. And then there's funding. He went from a guy that we all knew. And the executive uh, order. Incredible challenge. The, the trustee is selling it. The great looking guy. Hair down to his head. Thank you, Greg. Just a wonderful one. Everybody loved Rudy. Hey, I'm going to tell you, he just disappeared one day, and I hadn't heard from him. Fine. And then the beneficiary is going to be bad. And he was a trustee that's also a beneficiary. That's okay. And not that he was it wasn't pro military. He just, he was such, he was a Buddhist. He still is a Buddhist. Yeah. Um. But he was a warrior, and he was a warrior since he was a little kid. He uh, he got emancipated oh, from his, his abusive awesome. father, raised his brother, and his grandmother. Yeah. yeah, and then and then took it all on himself to make sure the family stayed together. And, uh, well, and he's a coach, Shaolin Kung Fu, since he was a child. And uh, he was he was winning championships uh, when I was doing back in the nineties. Yeah, and he uh, he was one of those those guys who this is what he was born to do. He is a leader, and uh, so we met him. Um, through Generation Kill on in Rolling Stone magazine, they did an entire series on his, uh, on his troop. And what they do, what they would do is go out dressed as civilian contractors to draw out um, these uh, insurgents, this ISIS guys who were, were kidnapping Americans, and basically just walk around and wait for them to get snatched. And then he would dispatch them, and then it would be a problem with his hands. Yeah, well, like, he would just... He would end up in these super close quarters in another country, uh, uh, in Afghanistan, and uh, they just literally walk around and start to make noise. Like, this is what I do. I don't really know how to do it. I'm uh, just an American. You know, I don't, I'm just here. And then these guys would snatch, that and that's what hey, he would punch me. It's still one of my favorite yeah. stories when they had to breach a door, and he breached a door mm -hmm. on top of a dude. And the guy was giving like him the information. What up, Nuggets, Ruggish? Yes. I kept putting my weight forward on the door. Fuck yeah, DK. Yes. Hey, yeah. you have know, yeah. the information? No, there's no other information. Like, 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 um, I gotta wait till I get paid up on this one, Jay Gator. On HBO called Generation Kill, right? And he was on there as a consultant. I'm still waiting for some money. To play his character, Fruity. Did you engage in, like, the, uh, as we all know why, Fruity, 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 uh, and the was, uh, was never ashamed of any of that, but super comfortable. What up, Spencer Square? Oh, it's so 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 it's so so coming back. I can't see this until fucked up in hell. They were denied. Look at that. A volunteer attacks on the day. Before he breaks someone's head and throws their head off the cliff, you know? Big tax on the cliff. Who's that? 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 Who's Oh, I have you look, don't panic. Have you never seen a picture of Rudy? I've not. It's like a little bit of a laugh. It's like a little bit of a laugh. It's like a little bit of a laugh. It's like a white person. Yeah. You can't just give it up. You know, Spanish or black people are using the thing. Those Spanish Asians. The fuck they are. Yeah. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Miss part of the show? We got you covered at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to Bubba Live Worldwide. <laughs> Monday, April 15th, the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Hello. <clears throat> and just uh, the dynamic. I, like, I don't think anybody has this type of show dynamic. I just looked at Seth, <clears throat> and it's like, I don't know, 15 seconds before we actually go on the air. And I go, how you doing, buddy? He goes, eh. I go, me too. I feel like crap. He goes, you want to end it? I go, yeah, let's go ahead and end it right now. Let me ask Dan for some fentanyl. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the show, not your lives. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm ready. <laughs> like, like, I said, let me let me ask Dan for some caddy, and we're out of here, Seth. Okay, that's right. I inject you, and then I'll inject myself. Okay, yeah. Well, then I'll get chicken after I inject you, and just say, "Oh my God, I can't do this." Can you? You don't ever want to be the guy, like. I think if you were like Dan, if we were decided to do a double suicide pact, right? I think you know you. You go first. I know, okay. but like <laughs> you really can't go first because you might get screwed with a murder deal. Yeah. So it, well, yeah, that's a problem. If if you don't do it yourself, and all of a sudden like you, you just encourage this guy to kill himself, and you didn't kill yourself, you're going down for murder. Right. So like I'm just thinking. You know, like you, it almost has to for the honor system be like I'm gonna point at you and you're gonna point at me and we're gonna count to three. <clears throat> Right? I mean, that's how you have to do it. Otherwise, if you said, okay, listen, you put a gun in your mouth and I'll put one in my mouth and we'll count to three, okay? Okay, one, two, three. Well, you blow your head off. And I was like, oh, I chickened out last second. You probably are going to go to prison for the rest of your life because you play, you're playing you're playing the suicide game. Yeah, it's, right? not, a game to play. it's not a good game to play. Because they'd say it was a murder suicide. Yeah, you know, they'd be looking at gunpowder patterns and how close was the gun. Seth, to I you think we and... can get through this rough day together without doing it. Without doing that, okay. Well, maybe we can revisit this in the I did podcast. Get a, maybe I, I did get a text from your mother. Are you, are you invited to Passover? Um, no, but oh. she, her and I are like little sister girls. We talk, uh, and she said, "Yes, Bubba, Dan is right. It's a holiday that we celebrate the Jews' freedom from slavery." See, Elise is my kind of my. Uh, she really knows the religion quite well, and she's my Jew, my Jewish religion uh, expert. Your mom is. Yeah, your Jewish That's sensei. What, she's my Jewish <laughs> sensei. So, like, if anybody gets, and boy, she gets pretty lathered up too. If you start joking around about it, well, you know what? You should show up in my place on uh, Friday or whenever the seder is. What's a seder? It's where we have it's the to, Passover dinner, essentially. And we right. have to read. We have to read from a book and do this whole thing. All right, so hold on. Now, do you hold do on. the full the full on thing like an hour? Seth, hold on. Let or me. Do you, let me. Five minutes. Anna, shut up. Sorry. Try to ask. I, I'm trying to. I got somewhere. I'm going somewhere, and you're like, you, you got three of them in. I'm trying to wrap my head around the seder, and you automatically come in there and say, "Bam, bam, come on, Anna." Sorry. It, no problem. <laughs> Little bitch. <laughs> About to get mine. Seth? Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay, Bubba. How are you? So this this Passover holiday. Yeah. Um It's an important one. Okay, it's it's a big one, right? Yeah. Right, right. Now, um do you gather at your mother's? Unfortunately so. <laughs> okay. And Why like, unfortunately? Well, now, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll break that down. Well here it used to be my Aunt Joy's house and then you know. Oh. She got that, demoted. There was a falling out. Now it's a, you know. Look, it's in Newport Ritchie, Dan, all right? And my aunt lives in Tampa. I don't want to drive all the way out to Pasco, but I have no choice. So. Oh, so it's basically com- <laughs> so, it's, it's lengths of drive for you. Graphically undesirable. You, are, yeah. you, yeah, are don't, a, you can't blame me impo- on that one. You are so impossible. Quit being mean Dude, to my the parents great haven't been to St. Pete in two years. Okay. It's once a year. They're getting older. They're scared. Yeah, but the Pasco <laughs> drives like okay. an hour. Your dad's David's getting scared. <laughs> Uh, t- uh, Seth, it's far easier for you. When me and me and your father were your age, we would certainly travel however long it took to be for us I to be with once family. I, I thought once I had the kid, you come to me. You, but, yeah. Okay, but hold on. That's I don't kind think, of a rule. I on, agree. Yeah, on. it is. Hold on. Okay, great. Fine, fine. Then you come to Seth. But, one, Seth's brothers have kids. So at what point do you use that excuse where they have to host? So you're not the only person in the Kushner family. You have two other brothers, do you not? I do, yeah. Okay. And do you want to host? That's and a lot the, of pressure. And the other thing is, Seth, do you really want all those people traipsing through your no, house? Yeah. No. No, or do no, you no. just want to get in your little car and drive to mom's? See, you're being a little bitch. Because deep down, you don't want to host. It's awful Hosting hosting. would be the worst. All these people traipsing through and getting all the... Is it a food deal? Do you have to have yeah. food? You have to have no, the food's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible no, it's food. No, it's not. Hor- it's disgusting. You don't like Carosa? It's a- <laughs> Hold on, Hold on. My mom It's not me- like typical Jew food. It's kind of different. <laughs> it's as typical as it gets. My no, mom sent me the not. menu. It's Stand torture. By. You get special Dude, stuff. If you, Bubba, if they made you eat this in prison, you'd have a civil rights Shut action. Shut up, Dan. I sucks. said. It's I not like a filter fish. On. 
I said that I would be a Jew if we could lift the food parameters. <laughs> I know the food parameters but, suck. Jews obviously have the worst food choices of all time when it comes why, to holidays. Why do they oh do that? Why Not do, during Passover. Why, 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 do Jews, why do Jews make it tougher on other Jews on the, with this crazy-ass oh, food? No. Because you, you think if you were a, 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 the starting of the Jewish religion, you're like, hey, let's make some cool food so that people, because you know, a lot of people that food means a lot. To they them. don't want to attract new people, dude. They're tight. They don't want new. They don't want new members in their club. Right. They got their that own club. Like, everyone else can f <laughs> off. We don't recruit. We're gonna repel you with this disgusting food we'll, we'll, and these horrible traditions. We'll take a conversion for <laughs> marriage, Christ. but we're not handing out pamphlets in the park or anything. <laughs> By the way, I misspoke. Passover's next Friday. Um, if, oh, good. So, <laughs> right, so uh, when Sanders you go to at four. So hold on. When 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 oh. so Passover is next Friday. <laughs> yeah. So is the beginning of Passover a thing called Seder? It's, that's where like you read you read the books. It's like you do some prayers. Now is Seder the story. At a, is, is Seder on Friday? Yes. Okay. So the beginning of Passover that you also not you know how does Passover only last one day? It's or, a week. Oh, so it's a week. Well, the Seder is just one event, and then after that, it's a week of no leavened bread. Okay, so hold so on. just eating matzah, baby. So yeah, that's, and that's really good, Bubba. You hold love on. unleavened right, bread. Everybody, just be quiet. I'm asking these questions. It does mess so up. So Friday much. at approximately is it a certain time that you do Seder? Well, yeah, I don't even think that, uh, look, I don't even know when Passover is, Bubba. I just go when my mom says to go. It might not even be Friday. It might be two months from now. I don't know. Seder, she might be lying to me. Seder, it says on uh, Monday, April 22nd this year. Oh, so okay. you're just doing it a week It's late. on Monday. Yes. <laughs> so I guess maybe it starts, I, look, I don't know, guys. But well, you, you got us down this road. You well, got to no, know. I'm just telling you, Seder's at four, dinner's at five. Okay. And then, the, and then it has the menu as brisket and okay. chicken. Okay, hold on now. Is Seder... Like the appetizer for the meal? No, that's when we go and we read. It's, religious oh. part. it's like the ceremony. So, okay, we have so a book Seder. at the table, Bubba. Okay, so you guys sit down, and Seder is the is the reading religious portion of Passover. Yes. Okay. So it's very se- interactive too. Se- Seder is about now. Does your family all like sit in a circle? <laughs> and, and no, like no, I think I think Jews the, sit in squares. I th- uh, Really? Seth, Seth, I think these are questions that the average American, the average, the average American that's not Jewish, we don't know, but we want to be respectful, and I'd like to know a little bit more about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just so then I know, be like, hey, you know, I know what Seder is. It's when all the Jewish people get around in a little circle and they start, you know, bum, bum, you know, like blasting uh, questions. Yeah, with them. it's um, you know, there's normally a couple of tables, so you know, we're at, can you, you jo- can you be joking around and telling jokes? It, used, it used to be the like women that. will yell at you. It, yeah, it used my to be, dad used to. Do that. It used to be like that, like and then you know, like my mom and my aunt, they would they would want us to be serious, but it's very hard when you know it's just hard to do, especially do, with children. But will they? But will they expect? Do, who asks the questions? Like, does somebody say, "Hey, Seth"? You know, well, there do, are the do thing, you know about Jeremiah and Messiah? Well, there's this thing called the four questions where you, you're supposed to read it, and it's like, why is this night different from all other nights and all that? And normally, like, they lean on me to do one of those because I've actually had been bar mitzvah and all that. So I think I get to read one of the four questions, which is always exciting. Now, do you know what the questions is? They're always the same, Bubba. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, well, it's not like you don't have to answer that. <laughs> There's no surprises. There's no surprise I didn't know this. If, if the question It's changed, not a quiz. I've been studying all week, Bubba. Changed. Oh, so Seth, since, <laughs> since you know the four questions, I got to think that you, by, you're you going to nail it because you've done it before. Yeah. Well, you read from a like a man, like a a booklet. You don't have to memorize anything. It was like you go, why is this night from different from all other nights? This night is different because on um, this night we don't eat, you know, leavened bread. We eat unleavened bread, blah, 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 blah. We eat, uh, you know, salt water because of this. Like, it, it's, you know, it's... Then the pillow one. Do you know why they don't eat leavened bread, Bubba? Why? Because it takes a while for the bread to rise and they were in a rush. I don't think Bubba cares. Your mom. <laughs> you're not scared. You're not your calm. Mom, you're not calm, She my told mom. me, call me. She said, <laughs> shut up, dude. She said, call me. And I'll get, and I'll get, please call me. For I'll what? explain. Don't I don't know. About she's Moses? Your, she's your mother. And Dan's, she's going to, she's going to break it down Dan for us. Dan knows more than. J- you're saying Dan knows Hello. more than Elise. <sighs> Elise, you're live. Hi. And would you verify, Elise? Fake so voice. That, so that Seth, does, <laughs> Seth, Seth. doesn't know. He, that you that you did say indeed for me to call you like this isn't my idea this is you asked me to call you yes because i'm answering i'm through the radio and i'm and i'm frustrated <laughs> right so. and and just dan is dan completely off or is dan kind of right or what no well i only heard the 
part of Dan when he was um, explaining what Passover actually meant, passing over. He was absolutely right. And Dan, what did you say? Passing over is what? I'm sorry. Well, the, 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 the Jewish homes would mark the door mantle at the top of the doorway with the blood of the with lamb to prevent lamb. the to prevent the uh, the angel from killing the firstborn son in that household. So that's pa- that's what right. Passover that's what Passover is. That's what that's the game we're playing here. Then once you get into Passover, your first gathering is um, at, at at three o'clock. You you guys do a gimmick called the Seder. Yes, but there's no set time. Um, we I'm just doing it at a time that it's sort of convenient for everybody. It's I, I, a Friday night. It's actually right at the end of Passover. You can really do it any time. Um, you oh, know, it's, all right. So, no set. so as long as you get your seder in before Passover's over, then you're then you're yeah. you're cool. You can either a lot of people elect yeah. to do it when it first starts, but it could be in the middle or it could be yeah. at the end. Right, and, and you're and it's typically at the beginning, and your and your seder is your ceremony that you go through a little, a booklet called the Haggadah, and you read. You know, you know, different prayers and different things that uh, go on during the Seder, and then you eat. And Seth typically doesn't care for the food of Passover, <laughs> but it's really important to let you know that the foods are symbolic of the holiday. Yeah, that, I know, but really I mean, it's, it's, Seth said he's just going to take a little nibble here and there, so he's going to get all the foods in, but just little nibs, you know, just to pay the respect. No one wants Kugel. Yeah. Oh, that's a lie. Kugel's <laughs> no, no, awesome. No, Elise, Elise Kugel's amazing. Elise, what, can you go through the food, can you go through the foods <laughs> of, 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 <laughs> of, of, of the Seder, please? Yes. I, I, uh, I, uh, there are representations on the Seder plate. They all mean something different. The shank bone is um, the the spear, the, the, um, the, oh God, I just did this at Sunday school. Okay, so we do uh, part Start with the salt water, is, Mom. There you go. Yeah, let's go with the salt water, Elise. Salt water is for the tears of the Jews when they cried when they were slaves. Okay. Um, the uh, We have something called herosis, which is chopped apples and cinnamon. It's delicious. And that is to represent, yes, and that's to represent the uh, slaves. The clay and mortar. Building, uh, yeah, and it goes between the bricks. Yeah, the that clay and the mortar. That. Clay and the mortar. So that's right. that's that. And then what about yeah. the and next there's one? A, there's a roasted egg, and, we, and that's supposed to be like the symbolism of the world, or people now say springtime. That's the roasted <laughs> egg. And um, now, well, hold on, but what, but what, now hold on, but what's what's a roasted egg? What's a roasted egg? A boiled egg, hard boiled oh, okay. egg. All right, so hard boiled okay. egg, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I can, I, 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 can, I can do that. That's so far, so far, we're okay. I like cheese and apples and hard boiled yeah. eggs. I'm, yeah, I'm good so far. You didn't say mm-hmm. cheese, Bubba. <laughs> so you said cheese. Cheese. <laughs> you just throw that in there. Apple. Cinnamon. 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 Cheese and apples, and then, and then, and then, uh, you know, yeah, Walnuts. okay. And what's the is there is there another food? Of course, there's the matzah, which of course is the unleavened bread. Because when the Jews um, got out of Egypt, they didn't have time to let their bread rise, so it's baked in the sun on their backs, and that's why we it didn't rise. That's why we eat the unleavened bread. Man, that's tough lifting for those matzah. those poor guys back then. Think about it, man. They're having to bake bread on their back, poor dudes. Right? That's bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. So those are the symbols. And then the actual dinner, I make brisket, I make roasted chicken, I make kugel, I make broccoli What's kugel? casserole, I make salad. It's a sweet uh, noodle kugel's dish. like noodle, noodles, and um, I make it like you can make a sweet one or not a sweet one. I I use raisins and cottage cheese. Oh, and it's so good. It's, it's really a cinnamon. It's, it really is very good. Uh, Anna's right, and and, and I feel I feel as, I feel I, as if maybe Anna I might, should go with Seth. I, I feel as if Anna might be more a little bit more Jewish than Seth when with regards to I the just food. really like Kugel. I like the roasted yams and the choro set is is I like. Why that. don't you make a no, dish Seth, Seth, bring it. Seth? Do you always are you always you miser- like are you always miserable, Seth? For the most part, I yes. Mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> always. 
Oh, like he just like oh, Seth doesn't walk in and go, "Oh my God, I get to see my entire family, Mom. What's going on? My brothers. Oh my no. God, I, gotta, I smell Google. I smell Google." <laughs> to be fair, horseradish is nasty, no. but the rest no. is good. Everyone, everyone in the family does that except Seth. And and what's happening is because Seth has that attitude about the food being so bad, so now. Um, his daughter will come in and say, I, I hate, I hate the food at Passover. So, I mean, I mean, you know, she's six. I mean, what do you want her to eat, Coco? I mean, if she's probably not used to that at home, then maybe that's why she doesn't like well, it. Well, well, wait a second. The idea is to teach them that this is a holiday. It's once a year. No, you don't have to eat the food. I usually always make something separate for her. So I might make her mac and cheese. I always try to accommodate her. Right, right. Because you're, 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 you're a good, because you're, because you're you're a good nanny like that. You know, I tell you, Bubby. Of course, of course. So I mean, I don't want anyone to feel obligated, but these are the symbolic foods of Passover, and and that's what we do. Yeah, and I mean, Elise, you really take this. I mean, of all the Jewish people I know, you take it this the most serious. I mean, like you know, well, it's, it's, you know, it's, she's the, the matriarch of the family. Well, yeah, kind of like the way your mom is probably the most religious within uh, your. Oh, within, yeah, like, on you Easter know. she takes control. Yeah, exactly. You know? it's, it's, it's what we do. Yeah, we give deference to our older you, parents. Yeah, I mean, someday someone else will take over and do it, but I'm the mom and. This is my family, and this is what I do. Yeah. Has Seth's so daughter stolen from you yet? We do. Oh, has she robbed you yet? Has Has little Sammy she robbed you, you yet? Down. Has she shook you down yet? <laughs> uh, oh, that's that's quite often. She, she <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because she'll come in, she'll come in like we 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 had her at the Christmas party, and she was shaking us right on down for our tens yeah. and our twenties and everything. Yo, Bubba, where do you think they she learned about money from? It was my parents that would always give her money. Like that's that's where she found out about it. Oh, okay. Every time she would go over, they'd give her money. Yeah, at least you've created a money monster. Yeah. She's like a cash cube. Well, well, you know, when she calls me now, she says, Nana, I'm calling you because my daddy's going to give me $5. <laughs> <laughs> she's stiff, Seth. I'm not calling Nanny unless you give me 5 right? Sometimes she's not up for a call, you know? Yeah. Anyway, listen, Elise, thank you for the clarification on all of it, and please know... That I'm, not a, that I'm not a very religious person, and I make fun of all religions, so please don't. No, I, don't I don't think I've ever made fun of Judaism. Oh. I don't think I have. <clears throat> but, you know, I don't. Oh, oh I'm not, I wasn't offended at anything. I was, I was just trying to clarify. Okay, perfect. Well, good, hey, good talking to you, and it's always, you know, you have my number. We, let's always stay in touch like we do. We will. All right. We will. Thanks. Thanks, Elise. I love you guys. All right, love Bye. you. Bye. Bye. So you could get like a big old beef brisket from the barbecue, and that would work, huh? Hell like yeah. That's what you're talking yeah. about, that kind of brisket? And what? there's an opportunity to make some money, Seth, if you find the Afi Komen. So. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a game. Oh, it's a G thing. Let me, let me, I'm back over to the rock, to the yeah. rock, uh, to the Johnny Dare show. Oh, ACDC. So they must not be all talk. I mean, they were talking about the guy that got the new citation. Remember the. the yeah. They're not the talking pilot. to Kringle. They're not talking. They don't have their Jewish mo- uh, mom on uh, the air breaking down what Passover means. I they're mean, come on. <laughs> they're afraid to embrace Jewish people in Kansas City. That's right. They don't love Jews. <laughs> They've never met one. Yeah, there's they're not mean- a lot in Kansas City. <laughs> they're mean to Jews in Kansas City. We're I'm, we're super cool. Jeep, 63 degrees oh, in Kansas City. It's Johnny Dare and uh, not Nikki Pace. No. But... <laughs> You're certainly a little less threatening. Uh, nice. Well, yeah, I, I trust. So good, we just got him out of a music song. A wrestler uh, and all around scallywag ne'er do well, Mr. Baron Corbin from NXT Wrestling. Um, we'll talk to him. He just wrestled, stand and deliver. Lysick uh, was sports. Imagine that talking about wrestling. Sounds like Alex Jones. Sounds, sounds like Bubba from. Sounds like me from '98 Rock Days. I get that <laughs> every time we say right, Lummy. Yeah. I mean, come on now. Always, always a marine. marine. Always a marine. Uh-huh. You're gonna have. You're gonna have. A, you're gonna have a, a wrestler call your show. Who started that? Come on now. It was Test Generation Kill. He has done a ton of great television. Then attacked. Then the guy, they got like a tactical guy that's going to call in and tell you how to, you know, be Johnny Tactical. If you think, well, the- guys, guns, wrestling, you know how it goes. Yeah. Because that's how you, that's how you win in this life. Uh-huh. In, in yeah. war. It's called war. It's not called fair play. It's mm-hmm. not called, you know, like there's a, here's your umpire. You know, it's 
It's war. Yeah. And most of the wars, I believe, and we'll talk to Rudy about this, are fought behind the scenes, never out in front of everybody. Not the public wars we see. It's the behind the scenes wars, the stuff that keeps it from coming to fruition. All of the terroristic things, all the 9 11. Okay, so we see 9 11, right? Mm. All right, okay, I'm done. Thanks, Johnny. I mean, you know, it's it was just, fun while it lasted. Yeah. Did this all come up because of the Chris Sabo show you did? Oh, uh, yeah, the Walter. Oh, Walter Sabo. So, well, let me so just, what did you talk about? Hold on, just one last. I got to look listen to Rick Stacy from Orlando, the number one rated guy. He's our number one competition. Rick, can we listen just one more time? See oh, if, yeah, see if there's zookeeping. Let's see if there's zookeeping. Okay, here we go. This, this is uh, Orlando's uh, Sunny 106. Was it, let me, Sunny Sunny 105.9 one, Sunny <laughs> FM. Oh, they make you watch like a little pre-roll. Sunny 105.9. This is the number one rated station in, in Orlando. Join Jill Schlesinger for Jill on Money, the podcast where money isn't scary or boring. Find Jill on Money on the free Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Or maybe though. Well, that happens to all of us. Get good go. enough fried chicken, it's distracting. Oh, here we go. So they're talking. Music, music bed underneath them. Here they go. Lasting, good, good ass fried chicken. Last thing you want to have before you hit a cement wall. That He's, is a great name for a store. We got some good ass fried chicken. A UK man has been arrested on suspicion of. Uh, just, does he just read the newspaper? Is that <laughs> it? Beard feces on the windows okay. of a restaurant. Why? I don't oh, Zwingsville. He sees everywhere out here, and the no. smell is horrendous. Oh, it was a Caribbean Caribbean restaurant. I guess he didn't like the, uh, the the service. Can you imagine being that reporter, and they're like, Jessica, we need you to go out and do a story. About what? Well, there's poop all over the place. We need you to stand right there in front of it and do the story. Can you imagine? No, I couldn't, but um, yeah, he did it because... I mean, this isn't MJ. It sounds like plug-and-play MJ. I mean, come on, it? MJ is way better than that. Smokies. <laughs> Cleanup efforts delayed business operations as staff... Story after story after story with... with He's trying to get through like five stories before he has to play another The music. girl giving Zoinksville and then some other dude saying, oh my God. What the hell's going on here, man? What is what is it? Poopy, 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 ew! Oh, now God. you're playing your parody. Oh. Please help. All right. According to Reddit, the most idiotic reasons people have gotten divorced. Oh, oh yeah. boy. Yeah. First one. They adopted a cat named Tinkerbell. He wanted the name change. She didn't. Divorce. Really? <laughs> Number two. Is that irreconcilable differences? I guess. <laughs> Grandma sued her second husband for divorce after he got me a puppy for my seventh birthday. She felt a puppy outshine her present to me. Jackass. Number three. My ex said her grandma was into astrology, and she received a reading that said her third marriage will be the one that lasts. So she hurried up and got married twice and divorced twice. <laughs> and you know, this is all written comedy sheet stuff like this isn't real this isn't real at all this is show prep you order a play uh order a prepping service called like the complete sheet or stuff and they write this stuff down for you to talk about <laughs> and that's um, why every see. morning uh, show in the country yeah. has the same format exactly. and it talks about Number the same six. thing hold on listen to damn we're at six but uh she called off the wedding because new kids on the block were doing a reunion tour and she decided that was more important <laughs> Oh, Gee, I mean, where's the... The Z Morning Zoo on Z100. I called off my wedding for a good reason, though. You called off your wedding? I, I Yeah, I was engaged when I was like 22. The metal guy? Yeah. Oh, wow, you would have a bunch of tats by now. So it wasn't New Kids on the Block. Whose tour was it? It was nobody's tour. Menudo. I just, I just didn't... Um, I was kind of dumb at the time, was, and I didn't realize until two months before the wedding that I was like, hmm, I don't want to marry this guy. What was the name of the band he played in? Piston Honda. What? Yeah, that's that's hmm. our number one competition in Orlando. That's who's whipping everybody's ass. Listen to this. Number one, like six plus. Number one, like 18 to 34. Number one, 25, 54. Number one, like 35, 64. Like this guy is number one across the board. This is what we're listening to right here. Piston Honda. Oh, do we need to see all that? Is that was that well, necessary to make the film what it is? It makes it seem more real. Think about it. Anytime when you're watching a movie, does somebody go, you know what, I gotta stop and use the bathroom real quick? And then it's just like live action, them peeing, washing their hands, then they leave. Jesse Eisenberg, one of the film stars and producer, told Eisenberg. Yahoo. What? Eisenberg. I, Eisen, whatever. He's Eisenberg. The guy that was in the- oh, they got their honor that corrects him. That's oh, nice. Uh, one of the film stars, producer, Jesse, whatever his name is. Yahoo Entertainment, his he says there's more okay. Said he was more focused on the. All right, I'm out of here. Thank you. That's enough. I think I've proven my point. <laughs> <clears throat> All 
I, am, I think I've proven my point. So, uh, let me. This all started off with you know sh- shows that you know mess up or have technical difficulties or whatever. So last night, my good friend Walter uh, Sterling has has a, uh, a late night show that's based out of Philadelphia, and it's a it's a Sunday night like two hour show. And Walter is a fam- a very famous radio consultant over the years, and who's coached a lot of talent and stuff like that. And so he's thrown together this show. It's it's been around now, I think five or six years, and it's kind of like a uh, George Nori kind of just talk talk about anything. Uh, Walter's a little bit older, and uh, so I, I was. Walt, I got a hold of Walter on Friday. He he needed. He texted me a, a question, uh, something that him that him and I are working on, and he's like, "Oh, by the way, will you come on my show on Sunday? I do a show, and I'm like, I'm familiar with your show uh, on Sundays. Yeah, you've been doing that, you know. Now uh, on some, and he's got some pretty good. Uh, I think he's got five or six pretty big stations." And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I, I knew he did a show on Sunday, but I thought it was like a four to six, you know, or three to five. Like, I thought it was that kind of show. He doesn't do like a pre-record Willie or anything? No, it's live. Wow. And so he goes, it's 10 p.m. Sunday night. <laughs> you like, uh, big swallow. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, my God. So yesterday I was just completely out of my groove because I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to be asleep by six. Because I got to get up at 9.30, okay, or 9.15. I have to get up at 9.15, go to the st- studio. He has a Comrex machine, which is what we, you know, so what, you know how Shannon sounds so good? That, that's a, It's a Comrex um, uh, connection. And we have a Comrex machine, and they have a Comrex machine, which means we can go Comrex. It's like a, it's a, it's a really good sound, sounding line compared to calling a person over the phone. So he goes, Here's our, he gave me his engineer on Friday afternoon. They give me their Comrex data. I send it to Macho Man, He the Comrex information. He goes and remotely installs this Comrex connection on his computer so that all I got to do is literally go to Macho Man's computer, hit this one button, and it says connect. And then our Comrex, which comes up in the board right here, is now connected with their Comrex. So I do that at 9.50. Wow, and uh, and the guy's talking to me. I mean, I'm, his name is I think his name's like Kyle. I'm like Kyle, it's Bubba down here in Tampa. He's like, okay, we got you, Bubba. Uh, give me some level checks. I'm like, you know, check one, two, two. And he goes, I'm gonna give you a cup. So you know, he needed a. I guess I guess I really didn't need to check my because I wasn't recording or using it. But anyway, I, I checked his levels too. So he goes, okay, hold tight. So and for so I'm holding tight for literally nine minutes. And then you hear the Walter Sterling show intro. And then Walter goes off onto this whole big Carib- uh, Mediterranean cruise that him and his wife are, no, this, Mediter- uh, this Mediterranean uh, 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 excursion get flyaway that he's hosting for his fans. Him and his wife are going. And he has his wife on the air. And they're talking about all the cool things to do in France. So Which you love that's, hearing about. Well, yeah. So, but I'm on hold now, waiting. And he, and he, and the first six minutes is this whole. He he introduces the show, and then he's like, "Hey, I got to throw it over to my wife." And his wife and him talk about everything that they love in France, and they have to go on. The, and they're going this big. They're going on this big listener, and he's giving out the information to the travel agency, and you have to use his Walter code and the whole nine yards. And it's it's. I get it. I get it. <clears throat> So, so I'm thinking, okay, it's six after. Now they go into a stop set. It's the Walter Sterling show on, you know, K-I-H-A-P. And so then the, the, the guy comes back to me, Kyle or Kurt, who's on Comrex, and says, okay, listen, Bubba, can you disconnect your Comrex and, and, call, and call, the, call us on the phone? Like, okay. So he, dis, he disconnects the Comrex. I go back and disconnect the Comrex, but they didn't give me a phone line number. So then I have to email him and said, hey, what number do you want me to call in? So they're like, yeah, they gave me a number. So I call in, do 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 do. I got my headphones on. I, I'm, you know, I get out, I get, I get an outside line, and I, and I, and it's still going to be broadcast quality. It's going to sound a hell of a lot better than a person, you know, on a cell phone. <laughs> so at this point, I'm thinking, okay. Now I he knew I knew that I was going to be on the air talk with some foot fetish fetish chick. That's all I knew. 
So I'm sure Walter was going to was going to be like, you know, hey, listen, Bubba, who I've aired, you know, who I've consulted a little bit, who I helped get the um, uh, Howard job. Um, you know, Bubba's one. Who's up? Who's heavy breathing today? Is that Dan? No, no I'm not even close to the mic. mic. My, my, my mouth's away from the mic. All I hear is like every couple seconds. Yeah, who's that? That was just me. Oh. I don't think I'm breathing into it. So I, there, I kept hearing heavy breathing. Somebody, somebody's like literally mouth breathing into the microphone. <laughs> please, con- please condition yourself so that you don't do that. So uh, anyway, that yeah, I don't know if that was a fart or a hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it wasn't uh, Dan. Air, air, uh, air crick. So next, so I'm thinking, okay, now are they putting the Las Vegas foot fetish girl on Comrex? And I'm the telephone guy or what? <clears throat> so Sterling comes back. It's now 13 after. And he, he introduces the, the su- subject matter. Bubba the Love Sponge uh, is a shock jock who I worked with at, at Sirius XM. Bubba's very talented. Blah, blah, blah. Say hi, Bubba. I'm like, hey, what's up, Walter? He's like, good, good, good. Well, let me inter- introduce our next uh, person. And this is uh, Foot Fetish Willie, <clears throat> uh, Foot Fetish Rhonda. And Foot Fetish Rhonda, people pay you? Uh, Yes, people pay me to worship my feet and to, like, you know, get the balls of my feet. And sometimes I step on their face. Like he was saying, she was introducing her her gig. And so he's like, okay, well, we're going to, and now it's, now it's like 10, 25. And and he's like, coming up next, we're going to get Bubba and, uh, you know, Foot foot Smash Jones (laughs) Uh, to talk about you know the ins and outs of foot fetishes and what are some of the things that Bubba has seen in his studio before, uh, you know, blah blah blah. Well, then my phone they they hang my phone up <laughs> like they hit hang up. Oh, I forgot to mention that they hung up they hung up on me before, Lummy. Jeez, you know I guess that they were trying to conference her in or whatever. So <clears throat> they, I, I call back. He finally gets me, and then when they go to stop sets. When they go to the commercials at 1030, I hear a hang up deal. Oh, no. So I go, this is my opportunity to leave now. So I emailed Walter and Kyle and said, listen, I was on hold. I started on the Comrex, had to disconnect. Then I started on the phone line, got hung up on. Then I called you back. And as you were teasing, going into, into the stop set, I got hung up again. So <clears throat> I'm just going to let you know. I'm going back to my apartment because I have to be up at 4 a.m. for my morning show. I'm so sorry it didn't work out, but please know I was there when, you know, I was there. For ready, 40 minutes. Ready to do this. Jesus. So I got home at about 1045 and <clears throat> tried to try to par up my medication so that I can somehow justify, you know, I, I mean, I, I knew I was only going to be able to sleep about four and a half hours. So, you know, usually my concoction consists of an eight-hour sleep, n- not two fours. Oh, but you don't stay up for the Super Bowl. You don't stay up, like, for the Packers. I yeah, mean, I do, sometimes. What is it Rare. about this gentleman, other than he helped you get on serious? Is it the fact that he is a member of the Hall of Fame committee? He's a good friend of mine, and he, want, and he wanted me to be on a show. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go on your show. I just didn't know it was at 10 o'clock at night. Did you ever get on the show? Like, Five seconds. Oh, man. Just, mm. just saying hello? Is that it? It's like, hey, it's Bubba. He, okay, Bubba, a very, very talented guy from Tampa, Florida. Let me tell you about me and Bubba's history. I uh, first got to know Bubba when he, uh, when we were staffing the Howard channels, and Howard came to me and said, give me three guys who you think would be pretty good. And uh, I submitted Bubba, uh, Phil Henry, and one other dude. And uh, Howard liked Bubba the most. Bubba worked for Howard for six-plus years. But Bubba got Bubba. Yeah, but yeah that's, that's, that's about what I got. So I'm a little bit off my game today. Um, I, th- I, you know, I, let me. I don't know if the donations, you know, show that or, and you know, I just, I just, I'm just kind of off my game. Does, is, does Walter is he accepting responsibility for a lackluster show because <laughs> uh, he kept well, hanging up on you? Walter did email today. He goes, you know what? Horrible technical difficulties. That doesn't happen often. I'm so. My apologies. Hmm. And so I just, uh, I said, no problem, Walter. No big deal. I mean, that's, I mean, what, I mean what, else, what else is to say? Yeah. That's, that's, you got to baby face it. Put you in the Hall of Fame. That's right. No. This is, this is Coachella. 
And uh, I don't know if this girl handled her technical difficulties the, as good as I did or not. There, there's swearing, I believe, at the yeah, end. Yeah, there is. So this girl's like spinning at Coachella, and you don't even really know if she's spinning. So like the sound goes out. Like I don't know if whatever. Oh, I, like, I, oh, I, I thought it was about to drop. No, so well, did I. <laughs> you know, it was about ready to drop. She's getting ready to hit the drop high spot, and then had some technical difficulties. And listen to these DJs. They like they're not used to having to speak to people. You know what I'm saying? And they're just used to be able to fist bump with their two little Apple eye tops, and, and that's it. God forbid that you got a computer that froze up or a sound system that blew itself. You, 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 you're out there naked. Like, you don't have any instruments to play. Nothing. Isn't Coachella like 600 a ticket? Ooh. Oh, I mean, it's probably. super expensive. Probably more. Yeah. yeah, more. It's a big festival. It's for the elites. Then you got to pay for all the stuff when you get there. Yeah, once you get there, the ticket. Then if you wanted like a little tent where they had bottle service while you're watching oh the EDM God. show, that's like twenty grand. And then like you know, if you want to, it's overpriced. Yeah. yeah. How many people go to Coachella? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Here we go. Here we go. This is her talking. Tempos are double speed, and I have not practiced the math because I'm not fast at math. But I am going to. I've not practiced the math, which means it's all math. Hey, I got I a, know, I it's got tough doubling things. I got 128 beats per minute here, and now I'm at 269. I don't even know what to do. Yep. I am going to handle this. All right, let's try this again. Divide by two, kid. Y'all, don't judge me for being bad at calculating things. So, again, that's what music has become. Is this her fault, or is this just like an engineer problem? Probably tr- an engineer problem. Okay. All right, so there she is. Man, I feel for her. That's that's Especially in front of a crowd like that's that. That's tough, man. <laughs> Granted, they're all on drugs, so they're going to be happy no matter what. But. Now, 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 Dan's kid... Oh, let me see here. Hold on a second. But what's happening was her pitch bender oh, was. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, Macho. You've got to talk the same. I mean, like I like you like had a booster on you. Okay, He's very aggressive. Yeah. Okay. What's going on, Macho Man? I'm actually not talking too loud. Oh, sir. okay. Okay. I, 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 I back to the microphone. I backed I you down. <laughs> Go ahead now. What's going on here? What are we seeing here? There's a pitch bender adjustment where you can tell it to double the pitch. So she probably hit a button that doubled her pitch, and that's why her. Was playing double speed, so it wasn't really playing double speed. She was just stupid. There you she's go. bad at math. Simple, yeah, she's bad at math. <laughs> she's bad at controlling her own so, team players. So, Lummy, uh, Dan, it looks like uh, looks like flag football season has started yet yeah. again. Yes. This is on our Twitter page, of course, our Twitter page at the Bub Army. Everything, Facebook, Twitter, Rumble, uh, X, everything pretty much is at the YouTube at the Bubba Army. Follow us on on several of those if you can. You'll, you'll get occasionally some some lifestyle stuff like this. So um, this is one of your sons. One Three of, touchdowns. Yes, he had a hell of a game. <clears throat> nice. Yes. Very nice. Thank you. And and is it Max, your quarterback? Matthew. Matthew. Yes. He really dimed it out there. Yes, he threw a good one that time. He's been he's been good this season. That was a nice long now, bomb. Now, did you guys win? Yes, we did. He did a nice. uh, he did a rushing play too. Look at rushing right in for a touchdown. Juke oh, the guy. The nice. The would need to be. So yeah. now, now what? What's next for little and Danny? There's, a, there's a, another pass touchdown. Um, I only got two. Uh, I only gave me two. I put the other. I put all three on Instagram. Sorry. No problem. The, uh, two, two's enough. Two's play. But it was a nice hat trick. He never had that before. Um, they're two and zero, but we have some really hard games coming up. I would love some help, Bubba, because I think we played two of the worst teams so far in the league. But we got to play one of our listeners. Um, his son is on the team that we're playing next week. All right. Well, when when is it? It's like it's uh, Friday nights. Friday night. Eight o'clock. At what time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. I'm, I'm, I'll know, put you on hold for forty minutes. No, no, hold on, buddy. <laughs> this, this coming this coming Friday. Yes, uh, next Friday. Well, that my birth. It's Bubba one ninety nine this coming Friday, well, and it's my week. and it's my birthday. Well, I'm going to come by and give you a big oh, birthday kiss want... after the game, but maybe the following week you can help, and maybe you can come to a practice. I think maybe the following week is our first week. With, oh, if it's Friday, uh, maybe. 
<clears throat> Maybe, Dan. I'm trying to slow down. I'm just doing way too much. I know, you're busy. But uh, the kids I, ask about you. and No, they, they don't. They do. And I'm at a point where I, I, I need help. I mean, I can I know I'm doing, I'm doing no now, but I got some tough stuff coming up. And, and you have an ability to talk to these kids unlike anyone else. They really like you. They look up to you. And you understand football better than I do. So I, I, I really could use the Thank help. Thank you, Dan. Way over my head. I'll, 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 look at, I'll look. If I can help, I'll be there. Okay, thanks. Uh, from Dan over to our next favorite guy, uh, Brian Matroni. Him and his four, his where's three, Martin? His three buddies, his him and his three buddies. Now, now, one of the dudes is his next door neighbor. I think. I think uh, right. Yes. Is, that's, yeah. One of us. One of the guys that he went with was his next door neighbor that he's become friends with, and then it was the next door neighbor's friend and a friend. I think that were coming made up the made up the you know the the four person Brian his friend and then his friend's friend and a friend I think yeah and he yeah. was sharing a room with one of these bros I think he was sharing a well he's sharing a room with his with the his neighbor guy, with, with his neighbor and so this is their table they got and realistically and then if you look this is their view um that's I mean as long as that's not heavily zoomed if that indeed now to me I don't know if that is that's, uh, the, that's probably one of the best views you're gonna get you know what I'm saying is like is is that his real view or is it zoomed because it didn't it doesn't look it looks like it's a little bit further in this picture. Uh, it depends on angles and stuff like that. Maybe it's just a little Photoshop and that was really taken in the sauna. I don't know. It's, it looks like good seats. <laughs> hold, on. <laughs> hold, on. hold on. You said that this was really in the sauna and yeah. they photoshopped the event behind them. Yep. Is that what you're going I'm with? Sure it did. <laughs> It's the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Want to listen to the show on demand and on the go? Enlist today at BubbaArmyHQ.com and sign up and start listening. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. Tacos. Oh, that was Elon Musk's uh, baby's mama. I remember Alana said that. Tara just texted me. I think we're in church. Yeah, thanks for posting that stuff. You got it, man. You got it, be more lens. Money, Maria Perez. You got it. I'm just here for you and the people that like me. Did you see the fucking South Florida Examiner, whatever it was out there, Lummy? Yeah, he was next to us, kind of. Did you tell him that he was a bitch? I pee next to him. I look at his tiny dick. <laughs> What's that on me? Tiny I peed dick. next to him and he had a tiny dick. So Who did? The Bay Area the Examiner guy. What up, Longer? What up, Permagram? What's up, John Costica? What up, Costica? I like it on the big screen. What's up, Costica? I like reading the chat on the big screen. A lot of the survivors or lived experience experts were saying, you've got to go after the buyer, it's just a misdemeanor. And I thought, there is no way, if you buy, I thought they were mistaken. Opponents of the, a lot of the survivors or lived experience experts were a lot of the survivors, this bill punishes some defendants more harshly, a lot of the survivors. Hey, big lunger.
What's up, Brady Farm Jones? Uh, Sign. This was out there. Do you want to do this or not? It says, please open it. Do you want to do this or not? I just saw that out there. We're going to pick up the checks. Yeah, just get, it. get something sharp to open it with. Okay. What's up, organic jeans? Organic jeans, good morning. Come on, you got a knife? Sure, we have both. Let me. Did you check? Yep, I even have much to double check it. Because since the, uh, the the text is so fucking small, next week we're off, aren't we? Correct. On both or just on both? Okay, okay I got I got the hard part done. Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. Uh, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App at the Bubba Army if you'd like to help. Appreciate y'all. You can just help a, a lot, actually, by going to our YouTube channel and subscribing and get notifications on our YouTube channel. That's free. You can pretty much get about anything you want there. We got some uh, one-offs that we do there as well. My food review, Lummi Scope review, uh, the Anna Humble shows on there on Friday. Uh, lots of things. So again, our YouTube channel is at the Bubba Army. Uh, let me fish on the J. Fifty bucks on the PayPal. He said that the Rick Stacy uh, show in Orlando is way ahead of the monsters, and it's the number one show in the entire. Yeah, wow. they're they're the they're the number one show in the entire marketplace. One hundred five point nine, Sunny, Rick Stacy, formerly from Atlanta, and the guy at night, uh, Domino, he was a nighttime guy. When I was at Chicago and Philly, and when I was at Chicago and Philly during that era of my career, Domino was the big night jock out of WPLJ. Uh, WPLJ 95.5 out of New York City. He, so, you know, it was like him and then George McFly on B96. And then I think it was like Kid, 
Kid Crawford or Kid Craddock might have been the guy at uh, at um, uh, what was it? What was uh, the Kiss FM in uh, in Los Angeles? Those were the big, fran- the big fran- big nighttime top forty guys were me at B ninety six before George McFly took before I left Chicago went to Philly. So it was me at B96. It was Domino at uh, PLJ. I think it was uh, the guy at C100, uh, um, D- D- uh, Duran. What's the guy's name? Elvis? Elvis Duran. Elvis Duran at Z100 in New York. Domino at PLJ in New York. Bubba uh, at B96 in Chicago. Um, and, and I think, I think it might've been uh, kid, kid, I don't know who was on Kiss FM in Los Angeles. I thought it was Kid Craddock, but I don't know who was the big legendary. We were kind of the big three market night guys. Domino died. <clears throat> Domino died? Yeah. When? Uh, March already, 7th. I, this year? Yes. Cause he was doing nights at just recently. This is a uh, Domino, Domino was of doing, Sunny FM. Yeah. He dies was, at 61. For real, yeah. sixty-one years old. Uh, yeah, me announced by so Rick Stacy, 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 brand manager. What did What did Domino die of? I'm trying to find that. See, Seth, see, that scares me because Domino was a friend of mine. Us three night job, me, Elvis, Domino, and the guy from Los Angeles all were like used to be on a conf, like a creative conference call for night jocks uh, with this one uh, syndicated service. And we were the we, Domino was one of the guys. He was from PLJ. I was from B ninety six in Chicago. Elvis and Domino went head to head on Z one hundred uh, in uh, New York City. What did he die? Well, Elvis is gone too. Elvis passed. No, Elvis Duran didn't pass. Yeah, he did. He does, he does mornings on iHeart. Wait, who? Somebody? Oh, Kid Chris. Kid, Kid Cra- Cra- Kid Craddock in Dallas. Past that, okay, he yes. was doing mornings for years. That's right, and they and they they it's still the Kid Craddock show, but they got you know they just it would be like they would still call me this show the Bubba the Love Sponge show, but all of his ancillary dudes are are doing a show, oh. but they're calling it and it's still labeled the Kid Craddock show. We're screwed. Well, maybe you're not screwed. Maybe maybe I'm such a legend and have such an extensive library that you and if I I could you know license it to you guys. What? What is all? What? If I die, <laughs> license. Who's going? To, your state's going to get paid. Yeah, my. Then, yeah, then where's so your you'd state be like, you'd be, well, he'd be like, you'd be like this. Where, where are you leaving your you state? You guys, to? you guys, you know, need to give fifty percent of any money that you make to my estate, and I'll lease the other fifty percent to you guys to break up. However, you do it. Tom Bean will be. He'll be probably alive, and I won't be. He'll get. <laughs> he'll get it figured so out. So, who's going to be the beneficiary of your estate? Um, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. Merch Craig? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'm like just, that. No, well, because she's got more money than me. I mean, like, you know. Yeah, but she deserves whatever you got. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd like to say my son, mm-hmm. but how do you do that if you, if you, if like, if I die and I've not talked to him since 2021. He gets nothing. Maybe I'm, yeah, I'm just like, you know. I mean, if he's, if he's a strange, you know, that's one of those things, you know, people, that are, you know, descendants of very wealthy people. Sometimes there's, you know, there's months or years or decades where they don't talk, and then when the old man dies, they like come in with their hands open. I'm not and very, like, well, oh, I'm not very not, wealthy. With it's them. not happening. It's not happening. But here's the thing: you know, you got to understand all the content that we're putting up on all the various, di- you know, digital platforms. Those will always generate. It'll always generate money. Right? Especially get a big pop after you die. Yeah, you need another kid. You know, just like the El- like Elvis's Graceland. Mm-hmm. You know that still generates you know, money. Yeah, my my digital stuff and my content. And let me if if I die, then you guys could all just work on getting all that all of that old content that we you need to get. Like yeah, go, through, up, you yeah. guys could give you time to go through Joe the Supermarks tapes and or maybe you guys would you guys would you guys just continue to do a show? I wouldn't. You just try to live off the digital. No, I'd be go. I, I'd find something else. I wouldn't oh. do the show without you. Oh, thanks. It doesn't make any sense. Domino died from an infection in his hip from a motorcycle accident uh, years ago, and he never went to the doctor. Oh. What? Oh, no. yeah. For real? Yes. That's horrible. Got that from the great Shendo. So hold on. So, Dan, if you would go and maybe have a bad motorcycle wreck, and like, what, they, did the bone get infected? Like, wouldn't, like, if, if this, I mean, granted, if it was a motorcycle wreck that happened 
in the last year or so, I can understand maybe you can't get ahead of the infection. But if it was something that happened years and years ago, what could kill? Like, how could that kill you, Doctor Dan? It can. It's, it's, it's chronic osteomyelitis, and it can ultimately just eat away and, and kill you. Especially when it goes from a hip, it goes through into your pelvis, and it's very hard to treat. Especially if you're diabetes or a smoker or other. Chronic I know, but this problems. is, but, but I mean, this, ask Shannon when the motorcycle crash was, because if it was from a real, really, really long time ago, couldn't you have, you know, got into a, some type of, you know, some type of therapy where you could treat the infection or do you just got to live with the, I, I got to think that you can always get rid of an infection. Nope. Uh, if you can't get blood to it. Well, it said he started getting sick and he wouldn't go to the doctor. Yeah. And so you talk about a guy that like knew something was wrong has a problem that's hard to treat to begin with and then keeps pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And sometimes it gets to the point where you can't fix the infection. Wow. Well, Domino, rest in peace, my friend. Just, uh, you know what, that just makes uh, uh, beating Sonny 105.9 that much easier because they, <laughs> they lost their night jock. And, you know, this is a, as a public service announcement. When, when you have a medical condition, you know there's something there. Don't p- keep putting it off. You know, a lot of women die of breast cancer because they, they feel a lump, and then they just go into this state of denial where they just don't want to get it checked because they don't want to hear the bad news. Well, almost every type of cancer is much more treatable when it's small and early than when it's big and late. So there's not Actually, there's not a lot of cancers, and the number one killer of men probably is prostate cancer. Am I right? Well, it's, it's smoking, but in cancers, it's prostate cancer. Okay, yeah. so yeah, within within that, if you don't smoke, statistically, prostate cancer kills more men than anything else. Yes, if you're a non-smoker, absolutely. If you're a non-smoker, right. Well, it's my opinion, and you can verify it, that prostate cancer just doesn't appear overnight. Like nope. you, Like it's, you know, like if you go get a colonoscopy, you know, once every year or two as you get older... Like, they're not going to be like one day, you know, let's say you're very, very regimented on your colonoscopy. You know, what's, Dan, what, 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 one a year potentially as you get older? Um, no, once every five years. Okay. Once you get your first screen, it's every five years. So no matter how old you are. Right. Even if you were 75, mm-hmm. you don't have to get one until you're 80. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Slow cancer. So let's say that you get one at 75, mm-hmm. a colonoscopy, and they're like, you're good. We have, you know, we had two little polyps we, uh, we, uh, we cut out. And uh, we sent them to the lab. They were benign, and mm-hmm. we uh, you were fine. Well, when, when you go there, and when you go there when you're 80, now you could maybe start to get a little bit of, you know, maybe, so, Mr. Clem, we saw a little spot we're concerned about. Uh, we're going to take it, and if it's cancerous, we can get it. We can get it right now. It's just a teeny, tiny little spot. We can get it. It's not a big deal. We can get the margins, the whole nine yards. Now, if you go every five years, they're not going to come to you and say, Mr. Clem, we just checked out your prostate. Now, we know you were four and a half years ago, and you're on stage four, ready to die right now. I, I don't think that it can creep up on you that fast, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, if you, so if you stay up on it, yes, chances, I mean, that's the most aggressive uh, a cancer in men. And so if you stay up on it, theoretically, you, you shouldn't, a man shouldn't die from prostate mm-hmm. cancer. It's funny you mentioned that because actually my mom's husband is going through that right now. And did she, did, did he they catch it? They caught it early. They caught it early. They, his PSA levels uh, jumped and they were they a little high. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then they did some more tests, waited a month and it continued to jump. So they jumped right in and started and, do a, started doing a radiation. So he's almost done with his treatment. What I'm saying is like, and is it really not that big a deal? I mean, like, it's because I mean, it's they a big it deal so in terms early. of the the treatment is aggressive, but it has to be. But his prognosis is good. I mean, he's going to be able to still have an erection and still ejaculate. <clears throat> it, it, I don't know all those you details. Did you find but... out? Yeah. Did sure. <laughs> <Can> you <laughs> call your mom today and say, "Hey, mom, uh, yeah. I know I haven't talked for in a while, but listen, uh, how's your husband doing? He's well, doing great. He's still I mean, he's going to be able to get a boner." In, in, it, <laughs> in addition to the radiation, they're also which he's actually more upset about. They have to give him T blockers. Because the hormones feed the cancer, so he was more upset about that. What's a T blocker? Testosterone, testosterone blocker. Oh, Ooh. so that to give him like like because like... apparently testosterone and other hormones feed the cancer. So oh, that that I think is is that, worse. Is that what's probably messing up his bone? That's probably just messing up his life more, you know, with energy and everything else. So, um, so let me because I've been very aggressive on our Twitter. I do find some stuff that I like to share share on the show. Oh yeah. Uh, let me tell you, we're a pretty damn good follow because I got a couple little honey holes. I get I get uh, uh, some pretty good content from. 
You know, so go to my Twitter, which is at the Bubba Army, and you let me. You can see everything from a Hulk Hogan back in the day phone call about how much money Vince paid him to various other things that I find on other uh, pla- on places that I follow that I retweet that I find funny, yeah. like people begging for jobs. Jay's here. Yeah. Oh, Jay's here. Mm-hmm. No, I know uh, <laughs> you can re- you can stop that right now because I didn't retweet nothing with that guy. I, I, I did not have any course. You talk about hoppy. I wasn't alluding to you being the one that did it. I'm just saying it's up there. Dude, you killed it, man. That was a great tweet. I, te- I texted Bubba and go, did you tweet that about hoppy? And he's like, no, what is it? And I was like, oh, well, I don't know, but whoever tweeted it nailed it. Okay, yeah. Uh, but I'm not going to mention that guy because that guy's out of gas. Like, that guy's just hanging on. This is the stuff I tweet. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What the? Uh, that, that guy was catching ouch. a fish and a bit his wiener. Come on. What? Uh, what? Uh, this isn't real. Why? Come on. <laughs> now, this one here, like, I was thinking, like, they're showing a car that just got shot up in a, in a drive-by, but, like, there's stickers? probably, no, I don't think they're stickers. <laughs> and can, is that survivable? And if, you, and if you look at the windshield. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, here. I think you're getting fooled a lot. <laughs> well, hold on. Stop. What do you think? Looks like somebody painted that. Those are little stickers. He's yeah. <laughs> tired. He didn't sleep a lot. This this isn't uh this isn't is this a man or something. This is bad. I guess this, <laughs> this, is, this yeah. yeah, this is, you know sad. That you would treat your woman like this. And this is allowed probably in this culture. I think this is Japan or China or something like that. And I think this girl's having a little bit of an argument with her boyfriend. And look who. I think she's like, I got him. You know. No. I think that's a, I think that's a Chinese that'll learn you. I, I, yeah, that's. Oh. Did he spit at it? Yeah. yeah. Is this what's on X? Yeah, this is what's on X. Wow. And this is Never what. Been there. And this is what Gen Z's doing. This is why we yeah. Beat that, girls' heads into the cement and. and, and oh, Dan, I wanted to show oh, you. No, I wanted no, to no, show no, you no. this. What is, what is yeah. this? Hold on. There's a, no. a snake. No. And see its little mouth. Oh my God. It's a snake no. that got in to a girl's ear. Oh my God. <clears throat> No. Stop. Oh, that's that ain't real. So you're, hold on, you're saying I got bamboozled on this too? I hope so. That's nasty. Why is he playing with it and not just slung it out? Oh my god. I like the music. Oh my god, I want to take you on a conic boy good chip on the operative babu and check in shop the Jodi Puru. Baba, you got one right. Is that the only one I got right? No, no, I think the, the slap. I think that was real. Oh, no. there you go. Well, that really now, happened. In Saudi Arabia, when they have weddings, like everybody that goes to the wedding is supposed to bring your AK 4 I think you're supposed to literally. <laughs> That's like, how you celebrate like, instead of rice. Literally, if you go, hey, Jay. <laughs> Hey, we um we, we got invited over to you know such and such's wedding. We gotta go. Bring your wife and everything. I'll see you over there. Put on your uh, robe, bags of rice, and, and uh, bring your AK forty seven. We're gonna spray it with. Bullets. Yeah, that's like if you don't bring your AK forty seven, then it's kind of like disrespectful to the bride and groom because like after they say I do, if you have an AK forty seven or a machine gun, I think you're supposed to fire it in the air in celebration. And my only thing is, that's great. I hope they're firing them out over the ocean because every one of these rounds have to land somewhere, don't they? <laughs> over the desert, it's the same thing. There ain't nobody out there. So after they say I do... Is this what Israel had to shoot down over the weekend? What, what's that? <laughs> is this what Israel had to shoot down over I th- the weekend? I think, I think so. Oh, dear. No, this is a wedding. Are you- I mean, they must have a lot of money because because the ammunition's yeah, expensive. Well, <laughs> Can you 
you imagine? Looks fun. Can you imagine, uh, you know, there was somebody that's a little bit of redneck descent, and, you know, everybody that's redneck hire, you know, invites all your redneck friends. And, and like, I mean, Dan, you got a lot of guns. I got a couple guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, you Have know, you Russia does not. But, but, by the way, it looks like the snake video was real. Yeah. Mm. How about that, Seth? You know what? Right now, Seth, you can look at me. You can tell me you're sorry right now, bitch. I'm sorry, bitch. <laughs> Here's now. I, I I did watch this, and I want to make you guys watch it in its entirety. This is what we need, man. A, oh yeah, a, a, this is this is, uh... we, this is what we really need. And Jay, I guarantee you, you, you and Steve, Dan, Bill, and everybody that's got Jeff Jaragante and Rob Elder. Well, Rob Elder's probably our richest friend, is he not? I mean, I'm not trying to call anybody out or not, but <laughs> but, is, I'm calling is, people but out. I mean, I mean, is it safe to say that? Rob Elder's probably our richest friend. He's in the top couple. Him and Jimmy. Who's who's richer, him or Jimmy? Who knows? Probably Rob right now, but Jimmy long term. Maybe. Probably. Jay, <laughs> bitch, don't sit there and bite your lip because you know these stats, and I need you to help me. Don't sit there and be, oh, I'm not in it because I want to get in trouble. Put your balls on the line, Jay, and give us. They're pers- both up there. Okay. Like Dan said for sure. It's different types of it's different types of wealth. Well, anyway. <laughs> if, if if guys like Rob Elder had to, th- if, if guys like Rob Elder and Jimmy Clevis and Richard Fabrizi and all these rich people that I know, and you three guys had to like send in one, Dan, if it was on your tax form, it's like you, if you and enough rich people send in an additional hundred dollars, we're going to build the Black Dolphin prison near your home to put the worst of the worst. I think you'd, I think you'd say, yeah, I'll donate, I'll donate a hundred dollars to build a new prison. That's it's like this. Dan, have you seen this yet? No, I haven't. Watch this. Tell me you wouldn't want one of these in your backyard for some of these scumbags that we've got to run running around here, these kid touchers. Help the property value. And well, I mean, let's let's put it out there by Ocala or something. Put it by okay. my dirt track. Okay? That's better. Here we go. No, let's put it on the water by Emily. I'll put two hundred <laughs> Russia. Here we go. Yeah, I mean you can always it's a hundred man it's a hundred mandatory, but if you want to lay down two or three, you can. This prison in Russia has got it figured out. Watch. Russia does not have the death penalty because, in Russia, a life sentence is more terrifying than the death penalty. Listen, so they only sentence you to 25 years at this Black Dolphin at this Black Dolphin uh, um, prison, but nobody has made it 25 years. What if you're innocent? Really? Nope. You think they matter. <laughs> well, that's so, what I'm saying. You're so saying the, how great it is. I'm like, what if you're <laughs> the, the, not guilty? The, 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 largest, the percentage of people innocent? The, the, large, the largest... Um, the largest fine they can give you if if you're gonna go to Black Dolphin is 25 years. That's the max, and nobody has made it 25 years yet. That's how brutal it is. Here it is. Tell, and again, tell me we don't need one of these. Russia does not have the death penalty because in Russia, a life sentence is more terrifying than the death penalty. Prisoners are sent to a place known as the Island of Hell officially called the Black Dolphin Prison. Black Dolphin is Russia's highest security prison, housing 200 inmates considered the nation's most significant threats, including terrorists, mafia bosses, and serial killers responsible for the blood of nearly 4,000 innocents. Thus, the death penalty is deemed too lenient for them. In this prison, inmates cannot eat together. Guards deliver food through a long stick to a small window in the inmate's cell, consisting only of coarse bread and leftovers, barely enough to sustain life. Consequently, it's rare to see anyone overweight here. When leaving their cells, inmates must walk bent at a 90-degree angle and are blindfolded when outside. Man, they don't play here. Man. They do not it's play kind of here. Like they they only, but... Hold on. So when, they, and so when you walk, you have to walk bent at the waist. Like, like blindfolded. You can't, they, blindfolded. They only let you walk straight. They spend their entire sentences without knowing what the prison looks like only familiar Jeez. with their five square meter cells. During the day, inmates are not allowed to sit or lie down on their beds. Yes, hold on. During the day, when, no you're, in, when, you're, when you're in your cell, you're thinking, I'm, what else is there to do? I think in America, they let you just sleep. You, can you take get a, Wi-Fi. You can take a nap. You can do whatever you want. PlayStation. Well, yeah, you, well, they got all kinds of things. Not here. You can't even sit down or take a nap. You got to stand up the entire time only stand. Lights must stay on at night, and covering the light in any way, including with clothes or arms, even covering the head, is prohibited. Yeah, so you can't even put a blanket over your head. Can't do that. They must also remain active before sleeping, 
failing to meet activity requirements. So before you go to bed, they make you walk up and, up and down this requirements <sighs> results in punishment. Inmates have no privacy or human rights except for the toilet, which is fixed to the floor. The guards are armed with live ammunition, matching the number of inmates, ensuring constant 24-hour surveillance. For centuries, no inmate has successfully escaped. The only escape is death, making life here more painful than execution. Some inmates even fake escape attempts, hoping to be killed by guards. They're like, hey, listen, yeah. <laughs> let's try to run. Instead of you know being bent at the hips here, and let's just try to run. And you run, and hopefully they'll go ahead and pick us off from the tower, and we'll be dead. Rather than to, you know, today's Monday, rather than have to deal with tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm going to fake an escape so they can shoot me. To prevent suicide, guards confiscate anything that could be used as a tool for suicide. In theory, inmates are released after serving 25 years. Oof. But no one has ever left Black Dolphin alive, making the loneliness and despair unbearable for many who would rather die than continue living in such conditions. What do you think about this Russian... I, Russia. Listen, I know that there's going to probably be a lot of people mad at me and say, man, that's just too in, uh, unhumane and, and things like that. And I, I, I got to tell you, man, we, there's been some really, really bad people that we've had, you know, over the course of, of, of our country's career that could certainly have qualified for, for Black Dolphin. For, for Black Dolphin. Did, now, listen, did, this looks like this story here looks like it might have happened in Tampa. And if it is, Lemmy, I want you to try to. I think it was St. Pete. Oh, is it in St. Pete? I looked, that's what it looks and like they, from the and officer. They, and they paralyzed a guy? Did you see that? What? Yeah. Watch. What are you doing? Oh, I, I fell asleep. You want me to take it? No, you're going to take the ride today. So he's, I guess he's, this guy is, might be in St. Pete, maybe in Tampa, but he's sleeping in public. As a homeless man, like right there, he's he's sleeping against some fence and look like maybe a bad, a not a not so good area. And he said, "Are you going to write me a ticket?" And she says, "No, we're going to take you to the police station today." You're going to write me a ticket? No, you're going to take the ride today. What? I've decided that you're going to actually go to jail today. Oh, I've had no, far no. too many problems with you. They belly chained this man so he couldn't protect himself or move his hand. That's a St. Pete cop. <clears throat> yeah, that's St. Pete. And the reason why uh, I I, did, I thought this might be from Tampa because it's ABC Action News. You guys might even know this. This seems to be as whoever's lawyer who's representing him. And that looks like downtown Tampa to me. It does. Yeah. yeah. yeah so he's kind of a fancy downtown Tampa defense guy here. Hold on. He chained this man so he couldn't protect himself or move his hands and arms. This is in our own backyard. And they took him for a ride. During the ride, Sanchez Mayan falls out of the seat. Sanchez Mayan's attorneys allege what... And like when they put you in the one of those paddy wagons, aren't they supposed to like... Seatbelt? Seat, yeah. 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 But if they don't seatbelt you and the guy takes the corner a little hot, you know, you literally Just don't have... Like face. if you had your hands to maybe hold yourself against the wall yeah. or you could, you know, you could maybe not... Get braced. He looks like a, he did a million dollar baby where he like landed right on his head. Yeah. So they, they take the corner a little hot and... Oh, that's what are you doing? Oh, here, here. They take the corner. out of the seat. See, Sanchez Mayan's attorney like alleged what happened was That'll not an accident. Though? Sanchez Mayan's attorney say the van driver didn't stop or offer assistance before he arrived at the jail several minutes later. Is that conscious? So now, now watch this. this, this look, look at like this is going to get some. There's going to be a lot of people in trouble for this. Come on. They, they drag him out oh. like a bag of potatoes. No. Watch. Go. By the way, at this point, he's paralyzed from the waist down. At this point. Wake up! Sanchez Mayan is now oh. paralyzed, lost both legs, and lives in a nursing home. So he's paralyzed oh, and God. lost both legs. That is his sentence now for simply sleeping in a public lot. They sure taught him a lesson. Man, and that... Somebody's fixing to get paid. Now, that's simple negligence with a horrible injury. I mean, they did they intentionally do that? It doesn't look like it. It looks like they forgot to buckle the guy in. You know, in the old days, they'd strap a guy in the in the paddy wagon, and they'd rough him up, and by the time they'd get to the jail, they'd look like that, but there wouldn't have been a camera, and no one cared. Right. Because it was a homeless guy, or it was, you know, someone who was less than, and the government used to get away with that stuff. And then finally, I was going to show you guys this. Seth, you're going to probably say this is fake. No, I saw. I mean, it's. I saw it. It's real. Um, 
This is all on our Twitter, at the Bubba Army. I find the various things. I find stuff. This poor old woman. Don't, don't tell me she... I can't say poor old woman. No, I said don't tell me she gets hit. Like... No, she doesn't. Oh, want... oh okay. I, I, and, I, and I tweeted, man, I don't know if this is America or it's not. It's in Miami. I don't... Or... Is, it, is it Miami? Yeah, it's somewhere around there. Look how nice. I mean, this really, really, really warms your heart. Oh. Watch this. Just robs her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> See, what happened in New York? I saw Plot this twist. See, <laughs> just when you want to be the cynical bitch that you are, I'm sorry. And say that old girl gets. And say that old girl gets robbed. <laughs> no, watch what these two great guys do. Oh. Oh man. Oh. Oh, that's sweet. They take a watch. They take her clear across. And then, then one guy says, "Okay, you stand here and hold her." Okay, I'm gonna hold you. Oh. All right. Thank you so much. And she, and the, the dude brings. Oh man, that's awesome. Oh, that's very sweet. We don't see enough of that right there. No, we don't, man. We don't. We don't. We simply do not. <clears throat> we simply do not. I'm trying to look for uh, to be able to close, uh, to close this out. I'm trying to see. Uh, this is end wokeness that you follow. Under the survivors or lived experienced experts were saying, you got to go after the buyer. It's just a misdemeanor. And I thought, there is no way if you buy. I thought they were mistaken. Opponents of this measure include several criminal justice reform groups, including the Californians for Safety and Justice, Ella Baker Center for Human Rights, and the California Public Defenders Association. That association in. All right, all right, whatever. I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to find a few more of my tweet of my tweets here. That oh, did you see this bus driver? Now see when yeah. I was when I was growing up, and and my bus driver was either my mom, and then after my mom had a nervous nervous breakdown, my my bus driver ended up being a guy named Don Light, and <laughs> Don Light did not like you know riding my mom's bus was far funner because you know sometimes your bus driver's cool. And, you know, you can kind of let you kind of you know, have a little bit of a whatever. Or you can take advantage of them. Yeah, or you can, like, you can move seats a little bit Bamboozle while they're moving. Yeah. But not Don Light, man. <laughs> he was a, and we didn't, by the way, we didn't even have seat belts back then. There were, were you a bus there, bully? Bubba? No, I wasn't. No. Good. I just always kind of fit, fit in. Mm. <clears throat> well, when I, fir- when I first started riding the bus, I was on my mom's bus, so I really didn't get screwed with too much. And then by the time I started riding the bus and my mom wasn't driving anymore, I was like in seventh grade. And when you get in seventh grade, you kind of start getting on the upper end of the pecking order in the bus. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because by the time you're 14 or 15, you chances are you know somebody that's driving that'll do you a solid and come pick you up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, so Larry, Larry turned 16 in January. I didn't turn 16 till April. So from January, February, March, and, and most of April – when Larry got his driver's license, he would just come pick me up so I didn't have to ride the bus anymore. And so back in the day, man, Don Light would have certainly done to this. If we were going from seat to seat, he would have locked up the brakes on us. Absolutely. And we would have thought it was funnier than hell. We would have been in the back and Don would have been mad as hell because we're screwing around and he locks the brakes up and we all fly forward. So <laughs> lock is to the front. Yeah, and we were like, we would be like, ha ha. Again, again. again, again. We'd be like, man, that was like a roller coaster deal, man. I, I blasted clear over the other seat. That's funnier than hell. And Don would be like, you got to settle down back there. I'm going to break check you again. Okay, Don, whatever. Ah! Like, you know, no, not this guy. This guy's probably going to get arrested. Watch. You guys need to be in your seat. <laughs> that's like a oh, warning. Heads up, kids. Now, hold on. The bus is, <laughs> the bus is only going nine. That's, a, that's not slow. You guys want to see how dangerous that is? So he, so, so he, oh so he, he, he gives him a brake oh, check at, nine, sorry, no. at nine, nine, nine miles an hour. Watch. <laughs> see, if, when I was a kid, man, that would we would have laughed at this and said, hell yeah, this is funnier than hell. Yeah, but Not if this now, was your man. kid. Yeah, I would have thought it was, as long as he didn't get hurt, I thought it was, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> You get that? That's why you need to be in your seat. He was fired and he's facing 30 oh. misdemeanor mm-hmm. child abuse charges. Whoa. It shows him hit, hit the brakes again. Look, that's the kid calling his mom. Yeah. 
So, you know, what's the science behind them not having seatbelts in buses still? I don't That's know. That's ridiculous. Here we go. Then now, so now some, some dad's questioning about it. Budget, Jay. Budget. <laughs> Here we go. There was 60 kids on here bouncing all over the place. And I'm the substitute driver. Not I was anymore. coming to a stop, and I hit the brakes hard. Because they, they were not listening. So I'm sorry if she got hurt. Okay. Yeah, got, Full on. admission. Yeah, like I know. Uh, guilty. Yeah. 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 yeah, like like no, no, no. like like full admission, right? Well, he's done. Oh, that's that's, that's, I mean, that's he, why he's, he's facing done. thirty. Uh, and then finally, before I go into words, I, 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 I'm still. I think I'm still ahead. Uh, you're right. You're right there. Okay. This is just what I, I can't. I have zero tolerance for these boys that are not transitioning, that are just putting on some lipsticks and a wig. And going and dominate women like, you know, high school and college. I think this might be, I don't know if this is college or high school, but like, I, I just don't understand how each state doesn't have bylaws within their school, you know, whether it's their collegiate, their, the, the college isn't within their state or, or the high schools or middle schools and other schools within their state. These boys that are just dominating women's athletics i don't know how the women the the moms allow it to happen you remember when i told you about that swim thing a few weeks ago right that was the naia and all those parents wrote the naia and two weeks later the policy was changed so do i know for certain it was a boy Nah, pretty sure but they changed the policy after parents were vocal about it here we go episcopal abby wilson i'm very well it's gallagher mcdaniel lane two you this is high school in Oregon. Come on. Yeah, high school in Oregon. That distance? Yeah. Oh. Great knees, great drive. Nice penis. Remember that Saturday thing flopping up and down. Look at section number one. No, no. Now here, here are the girls. This is really the race. Right. This, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this is really the race. Twenty-five. You know, it looks like the minus the girl that got kicked out because that guy took her spot. Right. right. Exactly, Anna. You're right. <laughs> So there should be really one more girl in lane, yeah. in lane what, two or six, or whatever mm-hmm. he was in. At 49. If I'm these girls, I'm like, I mean. Like, Look at the difference in the yeah, size yeah, of the girls that, compared no. to the boys. He's this jacked. Is, this, this, this is the girl. In quotes. This is the person that presented themselves as a girl to compete in what it looks like with the girls 200. This is the girl right here. Where's the girl part? Second and Wilson in thirty seventy seven. There's Guy Spurs in thirty one thirty one. I mean, like you know, like when 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 is this? When when are we gonna be? When are we gonna be over this? Well, we're gonna be intellectually honest and say it's just grossly not fair. It's just it. it's just it's it's so absurd. It's just not fair. It's not appropriate. And women who have fought for fifty years. And have, have had a chance over the last 50 years to really be equals to men I like to think in the nine. workplace and on the athletic field and have the same opportunities are shooting themselves in the feet because they're not protesting this enough. You have ruined women's sports. You are destroying the hopes and dreams of so many young women athletes that aren't going to be able to go to college, that aren't going to be able to excel in life because some guy who said he feels like he's a woman has displaced that person from being appropriately able to compete so with that her. year's 200 champion in track in oregon is not really a girl well to be uh with the finish of the story she actually finished uh second uh in that in that it looked tournament. like she won like that was like the, 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 yeah, the heat race yep. couldn't even win against a regular I like girl i think of my uterus as the deep end of a pool at a what? water park no children oh, allowed but if they end up there they die what? Oh my God! Yeah, oh. this is a hard. This is a hard. <laughs> oh, I saw this. Oh, oh, oh. I took I saw, a hard turn. I saw this last <laughs> night. I'm like, hell yeah! I like this. I like the way this chick rolls. Hold on. I like to think of my uterus as the deep end of a pool at a water park. No children allowed. But if they end up there, they die. I like to. I mean, it, I mean, you know, she has some crazy eyes, Dan. She yeah, has, you know, she has crazy. some. She didn't some, blink. Some, right. And, and then finally, I'll let, I'll let you because I love this. It's just actually, something we. Because uh, I guess. Some like there's a rule where Nike supposedly can't use um, Olympic Olympic athletes to to for their commercials. Wait, which, wait, 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 
What? Yeah, they're, they, they are, they're supposedly... Uh, everyone, Nike no, was, everyone's uh, making money. N- Nike was forbidden from using Olympic athletes in its advertising, so they did this instead. And I actually think this works better. Some Because there's more guys like me and this guy and Seth Kushner who ha- will never make it, who will never look like that Olympic athlete that they show us running so we buy their shoe. No, we can identify with this guy, though. Greatness. It's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few. For prodigies. For superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. I'd be tuckered out by now. You can forget that. (laughs) Be walking. I mean, the guy's just barely running. Greatness is not (laughs) some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. Oh, is that Todd her. Clem? All of us. Bubba, is that what you were? You were? Were you no, heavy like that? You not, weren't, not right? That Never. Big, no. God bless him. He's the trying. Biggest, the, the biggest I ever got my, my was my senior year. I'll be two thirty-five. Okay. All of us. Yeah, poor little guy. Right. Look, he's probably a farmer somewhere. He's trying to get back in shape. Yeah. I can identify with that guy all day. Isn't he a kid? That makes Isn't that me. A kid? That makes me want to buy Nike instead of seeing some you know Olympic athlete guy that's just going. Right. Mm-hmm. It makes you love this kid. Oh, God bless his little I, I, big I thought, heart. I thought, I thought it was. I, I thought it was. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I thought it was well done. Oh, Jesus. Oh, right. Jesus. So, the woman here we go. beating that I mean, really upsets me. I thought that was a kid. Uh, Lummy, we need to try to find out if that chick that was disguising herself as a fourteen-year-old, if she is in the Hillsborough County. In the jail still. In the jail, and maybe make a request to see if we could. If she's lawyered up, though, Jay, she they probably wouldn't let her talk to us, right? If, mm, if, probably not, but my, my boy knows some inside info. <laughs> he knows a couple of the kids. Oh, he does? Yeah, and one of, the, one of them is, like, mortified, and the other one's like, yo, I got some uh, old woman. <laughs> yeah. So one's proud like you would be. Yeah. And one is mortified of the two that, that Jay knows. Will they, ha- will they have to testify? I think they try to avoid it, and she... Did so many things on her own to hang herself. From what I understand, and I don't know this to be true, but from what, what Trey heard, literally, from one of the kids is that she went to one of the houses, broke into one of the kids' phones, and allegedly, like, sent pictures from his phone, and that's how they have it. So she, like, kind of busted herself. Hold on. So she went in to a guy's phone. This is the word on the street. Right. Word on the street, we don't know it to be true hot news. Um, Among high school kids, the word on the street is she still was posing as a kid. And I was like, this is what I asked my son is, how did she get there? Did she drive herself? Did the people never meet her parents? I mean, when my kid's 12, 13, you meet parents. Anybody well, or anybody that's walking through that door you're having an interaction with. Right, so how did she, how did a 23-year-old get in your house? Yeah, how does 23, how do you like, damn, what the hell's going on? She's not 13, she's 20, look at the knocks on her. I mean, she, I mean, she was, she's an attractive woman. Yes. And, and she would, uh, she would disguise herself or would make profiles on various social media that she was what, 13, 14? Yeah. 15, I think maybe. And then 14. she, would, and then she would go and sleep. And I, and I think from what I can gather, it's been, it was several dudes. Yes. It wasn't just, you know, it was like four or five. It wasn't one. It was multiples for sure. And was it within the Jesuit community? It was middle school. Jesuit's high school. No, that was too old for her. So it was kind of the Jesuit's <laughs> middle school feeder program? Yes, exactly. Wow. It was the feeder program. Wow. I, I bet you she's still in jail. Let me, let's see if we can track that down and see if, I mean, I'd love to try to have her on. All right. All right. <laughs> Yes, this is a daily telethon. We gotta keep the lights on somehow. So don't forget PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. All at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Bubba the Love Sponge. We'll be back after this. Jay, you got about the package. Okay. I actually know one of the boys well. It looks like she's still in jail. Oh, the judge no. didn't give her bond. How are you? Uh-huh. 
Jay. So, Dan, you don't want to open the package up next break real fast? See, Jay, Jay, Jay can open. I mean, I, I have to go. Okay, you got to go. I mean, I got to go. All right. See you, man. All right, see you guys. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. Hi, guys. Hmm. What fragrance do you want? What fragrance do you wear? I think this is Versace. It's not good. I like the smell good. Mm, too. Bubba smells great in the morning. He does. He, he, like, he smells awesome. Yeah, and I always like, like do a Smelly weird Joe Biden on him. I sniff his ears. Yeah. <laughs> because he, like, he's got an ear fetish. Usually sure other does. people's ears. What a big... Roger, how you doing, my friend? Good morning, everybody. Organic gene. It's Something Channel Lumber Island, 68. Tampa Florida flag in the middle of the Channel Island. I know it's the one I wear for years. Uh, AP Tony Peters. Good morning. Brian Gilson. The Brian Gilson. Big Lunger. Schnizuki Slayer. Alpha. <laughs> Stephen Coco, what up? Calvin Warning. Letter in the box is for Bubba. Okay. Letter in the box is for Bubba. May I approach your honor? Yeah, 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 but of course. I was just advised by someone in chat that this letter is for you, not for Danny. Oh, okay. Thank Check you. for anthrax. Thank you. For Check for white powder. Yeah. Burn and bam So I'm going to do better help, and then we'll go into this package stuff, and then we'll go into the Israel stuff. Sounds good. Great farm. What up, everybody? Steve the Grumpy Old Man, DDP for life. What's up, everybody? Yes, it was a sidebar. I must approach Xerxes. Highway 73, Dan Wiz. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Everyone had a great weekend. Seminole Snowman. What up? HS Bub Fan 69. You're better, grouper lips. Hope you and your wife are well. Just me peeing behind them. Dan Wiz, what up? Suki John, too. Hope everyone's ready for a good week. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Bubba, could we get one degree down on the thermostat? Yep. Thank you. Spencer Spencer. How are you? Good weekend. Um, it wasn't bad. If you don't know what you did, that's a good one. I, I just didn't do, I didn't do anything. I like those weekends. I didn't do anything. Yeah, well, those weekends are great. Like four hours. That's awesome. How many miles? Shit. Mm, just 123. Ooh, that's a hell of a ride. I mean, we didn't bike the entire time. But, that's you know, a great ride. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Oh. I'm glad I got some yeah, yeah, out. Color. color. I'm trying to get Dan Pinch. Pinch, what up, buddy? Please, please. Venmo. How do you? Pedro the pool guy, how you doing, buddy? Hope you're well, my friend. Mm. What up, Glenn Longnecker? Big E, my friend. Thank you, sir. Everything is well here. Mm. The Sam Anglin. What up, buddy? Oh, good morning, Gary Greenwine. Oh, Gare Bear. Oh, good morning, Gary. Hope you're well. Hi, Gare Bear. Hi, Rusty Teen. He's won us all over. Especially you, Jay. Well, let's not go that far. I'm praying for you, Pedro. Glenn Longnecker.
So it's going to be JH coming three. I'll see you three. Good morning. Say hi to Seth. Dude. That's not cool. What up, Nick? I hope you're feeling better, my friend. Show. After the show, make sure to check out BubbaArmyHQ.com. It's all things Bubba 24-7. And now back to the BRN. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Again, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com. They've been with us for a while. They're a great client. Them and uh, the, the Heartbeat Slummy, we are so appreciative. Yes, we are. And a lot of us want to make uh, more time to do what what's makes us happy. And if you're thinking about starting online therapy, you might want to try BetterHelp. Again, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. They make it quite easy. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. You can visit BetterHelp.com. Forward slash BTLS. That'll get you 10% off your first month. Again, it's really simple. B-E-T-T-E-R, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com. Forward slash BTLS. Uh, Jay, did you get a chance to start... um, I'm sure I'm sure you didn't. Uh, suits yet? Nope. Hold on. My bad. No. There you go. Well, okay. Um, I was going to start it last night, and I didn't do it. I fell asleep on the couch. I just so want you to start it, watch it because it's a lawyer deal. Yeah. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm think I'm on season six. Really? Uh, but it'll be easy. It'll be fun to you know speak to you about. You being so far behind, then I'll rem- <clears throat> remind I'll remember where where you're at when you're watching, and I can a- ask you if legally are. Do you think that I mean it's all about a legal firm in New York, mm-hmm. a big firm, and you know, um, it would be interesting to see how factual they are because I mean they do. I mean it's it's again it's the ins and outs and the drama of a big named firm in you know our, our and you know you can be a big firm in Tampa or Orlando but being a big firm in in Manhattan that's that's a big deal isn't it for sure um when i had my big firm we were recognized nationally as one of the top firms in the nation you had what offices in fort hold on don't don't even tell me fort lauderdale orlando tampa jacksonville fort myers i think Not lakewood ranch Orlando, Tampa, and actually Miami proper, right on uh, West Flagler. Nice. 44 West Flagler, right there across from the courthouse. And how? And, and was your life just a whole lot more complicated than it is now? For sure. We had 150 employees and 50 lawyers and a, your plane that we you know split yeah, with you. Yeah, right. I used to always wonder, who needs a plane for work? Well, when you have 150 employees and you can't drive around the state, you need a plane. Right. And so that plane certainly made it a lot easier for us to manage a big firm anyway um, i'm in i'm I, I, oh my god you really want a friend to talk about this with don't you i, I do I'm gonna watch it. I, do. I promise i'll watch it i promise you can't talk about it with merch crick yeah, well she i mean he wants to know she's, she's, she's watching she's watching with me i she know can tell you about a cop show and and megan markle is one of the stars and she looks so good i've turned into a megan markle <laughs> let's fan. get to the truth seth all he wants to do is talk about megan markle i know <laughs> no it. because no, 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 no. Hold on, Jay. You know those shows where, like, everybody they pick is hot? Yes. Yeah. Well, th- this is like, okay, Meghan Markle's hot, and oh, then Harvey, that, Harvey, Harvey's, um, Harvey Spencer's assistant, Donna, is the hottest ginger redhead ever. <clears throat> and then the woman, the, 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 the head of the, the 
top name partner is an African American woman who is just hot as hell. So that's back when they had casting agents that could actually try to get like the best people qualified for a job. Oh best yeah. looking. And then uh and then like all like these new pa- these new paralegals they bring in and these new associate per- um you know they they're all hot. And then they got the g- bad guy and 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 Lewis Lewis Lit. He's he's kind of the 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 slimy attorney of the firm. Dan Dan Harvey Specter is kind of a crossbreed between you and Dan. He's cocky like Dan, but calculated like you. Well, and- you've seen me in a scenario where I don't like to say it cocky, but there are certain scenarios where I'll walk into a room and say things that some people would perceive as cocky. Um, that, but hold on. Know. That's the good qualities of Harvey Specter. He's a real dick sometimes, too. Way that's more. That's got to be the Dan. Th- oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's. <laughs> Like there's this, they, you know, like there's this one woman. She was trying to sleep with them. She was an attorney. I mean, she was a client. And if she entered into the settlement, she would no longer be a client. And she's like, she, you know, he Harvey Specter is like really good looking. He's the main one. He's one of the main dudes. And all the chicks want to sleep with him. Well, she she's going through a divorce, and she asks him, "I want to, you know, do you want do you want to sleep together?" And he's like. Uh, if you sign that a document, I'm no longer an attorney, then we then we can sleep together. So he sleeps with her one time. Well, she thinks it kind of means something, but it, it it you know, he just he just slays ass. So she comes to his office one time at night. She's like, Are we gonna did that mean he's like, that didn't mean nothing. He's, you need to go home. Stop you're trying to ask me out again. Don't spoil it, Get Bubba. the hell out of here. No, don't uh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> Seth, was, Seth was going to go home and watch it today. I thought there was going to be something. Watch it. Seth yeah. going to watch it. I love uh, that Meghan was Markle. One, hold on. That was one scene. That was one scene on one little thing. But then you showed us a preview, and then you talked about Meghan Markle, and I just feel like you're telling me about the whole show, and I really want to carve out and, and, six months of my life to watch nine seasons. <laughs> and, and the African-American named partner. Was one, well, hold on. He can already said that. And the African-American woman, Jessica, who is the main partner. Man, she's a hard ass, but super hot. And uh, I, I think I really think that you would. I think you would like it, Jay. I, I'm I'm hooked to it. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it for you, Bubba, and see how good it is. And if it's well, not least, good, I, can I at least tell you if I think it sucks? Well, hold on. Give <laughs> no. it. Give it. <laughs> Do I have to watch all six seasons? No, 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 no. For like, like I just want you to get. I just want to commit to three episodes. Oh, Done, man. And if you commit to three episodes, then you can either like, you know what, I want to continue on. Yeah. I like it. That's or, a fair amount of episodes. Yeah, that's you know, that's uh, you know, three hours of your time. Well, I mean, three episodes of Breaking Bad. You know, if you wanted to watch that whole series, exactly. I was hooked. I think three, three, you know, three, se- three shows of, of anything. This isn't a Breaking Bad, right, Bubba? No, no, it's all about the legal no, no, system. No, no, I'm saying this isn't one of the greatest shows of all time, is it? No. Okay. See, I would, Seth, I, I didn't mean, get into Breaking Bad till it was already done, season finale, and then all of a sudden I caught, I caught it because my law partner had watched it all the time, and I just binge watched. I've fair. never done it ever. It was, a, but it was better. Was it hard to watch it real time? And then forget what happened three years before? No, because you would talk about it with your friends every single week about what was going to okay. happen and what happened and everything, because it was just that kind of show. It was awesome. Yeah, it was like Game of Thrones and Sopranos. Breaking Bad was in that, you know, that cult-like. There's only been a handful of those in our lifetime. You know, there's probably what been. I mean, if you, if you, if you talk about, like, pop culturally, you know, Game of Thrones certainly was one of them. Right. I mean, M.A.S.H., is probably the most. They probably mash, yeah. But was mash? I I gotta watch it every week. Kind of yeah, deal. I think it still holds the record for the most viewed last episode. Seinfeld, you know, Seinfeld, Seinfeld was that. Friends might have been that. But as far as like that kind of intense TV drama, that was probably. I can't think of another one that's up there with it, other than like maybe what was that NYPD, where people were crazy about it. I know it's not like the the young nip, generation, but when we talk. were kids. Remember Sex in the City? Sex in the City's up there. Nip Nip Tuck was but one I think early Breaking on. Bad, there was never a show that that showed that kind of subject matter, that raw, intense, like, you know, sometimes you'd be done with those episodes. And uh, just, well, I mean, The Wire and Oz, you know, those were. Those, Sopranos, did we say uh, that already? Yeah, Sopranos, Sopranos for sure. Got to put Sopranos in there. No, I don't think Suits is in any way, shape, or form. Even Ozark, you could probably put Ozark in there. Is it in Yellowstone? Is it as good as Yellowstone? Um, no, probably uh, a bit, 
one cog down from Yellowstone, but there's only one Yellowstone. And supposedly, let me. Um, Kevin Costner, Kevin Costner yeah. said, I ain't doing it. Didn't he say that? Uh, I thought he just came out and said that he, he's ready to get back to work. Well, why don't you? Well, why don't you find? Let me see if I can find that. I think but the, by, by three episodes, Jay, and in the world that you live in, you're either going to really, really like it because it's it's it it shows the cutthroat world of big partnered law firms. I mean, there's a diff- listen. There's a whole different vibe when you are, you know, a a, a three floor firm based in Manhattan than you know your your what 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 they would call like a boutique shop compared to you know the big juggernaut uh, in Manhattan. Right, I've had both, and you've had both. Yeah, we had a so, couple floors at two offices. So what I'm saying is. You of all people will be able to sniff right through this yeah. as to whether this sucks and they really aren't legally factual, or okay, I like it and it, this I could this this sort of thing happens in big firms. No, it could also big cutthroat firms where people are trying to get a named partner status. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it could also be that it's not stuff that happens, but still entertaining. Like the first thing you said about the the lawyer and the divorce and signing the paper. In law school, they taught you that the quickest way to lose your license is sleep with the client or steal their money. And so that would never happen. Well, Maybe this, back then, but that would never happen well, now. The whole, you're losing the your whole license. show, hold on. Uh, l- 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 let me just tell you this. The whole show, the whole premise of a show is that there's this guy who's a... a, a, a uh, a courier, a bicycle courier, but he's an absolute genius, and he fakes the fact that he's an attorney. He passes the bar. Really? Yeah, he passes the bar, and for a while, for a couple of years, his job was just to take the bar for people, and they charge him <laughs> five, and he charge him five thousand dollars to take the bar for these people. <clears throat> and so, yeah, so it's, it's the whole thing. It sounds cool. Yeah. And they only, and the firm that he ends up working for, they only hire Harvard grads. Like, so even their, like their associates and, you know, like their underlings, you have to have graduated from Harvard or you can't even get an interview there. There are absolutely firms like that. There really are? Absolutely. Like Yale, Harvard, if Cornell, you're not whatever. Ivy League, you're not even getting an interview. I sent you that Kevin Costner article about. Him saying that he has he wants to come back and uh, film the last season. Is it? Oh, not that one. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. Let me. I didn't. I didn't get it. Oh, you know why? Because that's on a Hummel. I didn't uh, click. Uh, I didn't click on uh, the Lummy. On the Lum Lum. Okay, here we go. Here it is. Because I I I I I thought that he said he didn't want to come back. No, he says he wants to now. I think he and he might be dating uh, Jewel. So really, really, that's the rumors. Sna- she is she still snagged up? She yeah. is. Yeah, she's sweet. Kevin Costner says he hopes to return to the final episode uh, for final episodes of Yellowstone uh, after previously threatening to sue the show's producers over a pay dispute. Kevin Costner said he's open to returning to the final episodes of Yellowstone. Last year, he left the show after a dispute with the creator Tyler Tyler Sheridan. Over shooting schedules, you didn't at one time like he was supposed to shoot like twenty dates, and then he told him that he'd do it all in three. Yeah, or he's out of there. Yep, he seems like a dick. He 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 kind of does, does he not? He really he does. does seem like a dick. Uh, let me go into words so I can try to stay on time. Let me we're kind of come back with you know as most people know, you know Iran launched a missile strike on uh, on uh, Israel, and I don't know how many got through. How many, what's the casualties? But everybody's talking about it. They said no one died, I believe. One Bedouin girl, I think, was injured. Yeah. That's it. Isn't that insane? They Jerusalem's <laughs> got that badass Iron Dome. Yeah, and they yeah, have the Arrow shot. 2 and 3, which is actually their their top tier defense, then followed by David's Sling. And actually, Iron Dome is, is third tier. But they're usually not getting missiles from Iran. Usually, it's from Gaza, and, right. you know, Hezbollah, and Le- Lebanon. Well, throw, you, throw all your Iranians you want, you little bastards. The US we got took it. Out I think the, the majority of them, too. Yeah, the yeah. US was in the water. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same with Jordan in the UK. I believe yep. they shot off 300, Bubba, but I, I think seven got through. All right. Well, we'll talk. Which the news is trying to downplay that, which is like, that doesn't make, they still shot 300. We'll talk about that next. Week. If you want 24 7 on demand, Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this.
you think so? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I mean, is it I, so? I only watched like the first few scenes of it, but I mean, it was. Yeah, but it seemed like they kind of did it come a point where they kind of jumped the shark a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, yeah, but I mean, it was a huge. Yeah, yeah. it was a huge. But then it deal. maybe towards the last part of it, they jumped the shiz. Maybe. Well, I mean, you know, my butt hurts. I'm sorry. Just walk it off, you know. Uh, we have 15 like seasons of the same like, stuff. Be careful, be careful they don't yeah. Their Everybody almost dying. Um, escalate their response. Um, I mean, like, well, I mean. Yeah. Well, it was not funny, but kind of humorous. Was like, there's been a drone attack. It's like they'll they're gonna reach Israel in three hours. <laughs> like, you know, it's like. They've got green and red lights. It's like, okay, on the whole board. world knows about it. They're like, all right, this motherfucker trying to be slick. <laughs> Which makes me think, yeah, they were obviously trying to do something that would have been happy, but it was mostly for propaganda for their own people to be like, look how badass we are. Right. You know. <clears throat> Coming in hot in four hours. I'm like, what? <laughs> She knows you're here. Oh, God. <laughs> Skinny, dark know. man. Burp, burp. Uh, you know Jewel's 49? That's it? Really? I thought she was like 42. Oh, my God. I didn't realize. Not yeah. that that's old, but for some reason I just thought she was like a little older than me. You know how her whole story is that she went to L.A. and lived out of a car for a while. Yeah, it was doing like stuff yeah. in Her family is the family from Alaska, the last frontier, that do the whole... They had a show for the last 10 years on Discovery. So you're saying they had money? Well, no, no, I'm not saying she had money. I'm saying she left the homestead and she did that, but she actually comes from a, a great family, and the family's like on TV and had a very popular show in the last oh. 10 years. Oh, did she claim to come from like... No, 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 not at all. Nothing controversial oh, like that. Oh, I'm oh, saying oh. she really did... She just left on a homestead. But it was just interesting, like... 20 years later to see the show, and then like maybe two or three years after the show was on, she came and visited her family. Oh, oh okay. Um, uh, you see that she's in a little place, there's no way she was going to make it with her boy. She had to take off with the car and go live out of her car, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. I never particularly liked her music. It's she's um... really talented, but it's just kind of. Folk. Yeah, it's in a choir taste. Yeah, I, I kind of like folk music. I don't mind it too much, but yeah, she's got a like a weird, offbeat voice. When you call it, like, I was gonna try to really sneak away. Yeah, she didn't really like it. 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 Yeah, she did he decide recently? Who will that? save your soul? Yeah, okay, no. But that's the other show, Alaska Last Frontier. So that oh, 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 really? Corral and the, the, the cattle. Yeah, they lived on this property. It was established when his father moved to Alaska. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, wow. I think you're really, yeah, go ahead. Well, 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 well. Hello, everybody on YouTube. She dated Tupac? Is that a lie? I just put hi. I feel like that's a Alright, let's see if you're right. Did Jewel date Tupac? Lost. Lost a gummy. Uh oh. Oh shit. Uh. 
Man, that track kicked my fucking ass this weekend. I bet it looks great, though. Because I was up here this, this weekend watering my car. I mean, hosing it off. Did you wash it? No, I just gave it a spray. I don't really see anything. I spit my smoothie on it on accident. You didn't get a bucket of soap and a mitt and... No. Why not? I just was, I just was here to try to get the cards together. I just gave it a quick little spray. I felt pretty rugged doing it. You did? Yeah. I love handling a hose. Um, yeah. Oh, a yeah. spray nozzle. Yeah, it felt like I was shooting a gun. Mm-hmm. Nice. Getting that, was you getting that wheel dust off? No, I spit smoothie on my car. Like, normally I, I had to, like, I was just oh, oh, driving. Yeah. Yeah. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Miss part of the show? We got you covered at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to Bubba Live Worldwide. We often think about living a more heart healthy life, means that you got to make some big changes that you probably can't keep. With Super Meat Heart Chews, you can get daily blood pressure support and with just two little daily chews. And they even promote heart healthy energy without the stimulants. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants and super beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. From super beats, it's the number one doctor, pharmacist, and cardiologist recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. Super beat heart shoes also support healthy circulation without the stimulants. They're plant-based. There's no artificial sweeteners and or colors. Double your potential with Super Beat Heart Chews and get a free month's supply of Super Beat Heart Chews. All in all in all bundles. Any bundle you decide to get, you can get a free full-size bag of turmeric. That's a $25 value by going to BubbaLovesBeats.com. Again, get this exclusive offer at BubbaLovesBeats.com. Bum, I didn't even need you on that. Oh, you're yeah. smooth. Here's some footage of... Um, now, what does this mean? Is this the first um, situation that Iran has thrown uh, its it its hat into this particular excursion? What is this? I mean, is this the first time that Iran has bombed Israel during this time since the attack? Directly, yeah. And and they have before, though, right? Um, I'm I'm not sure, but I this is a response so. from the uh, consulate, the Iranian consulate that the Israelis blew up in Damascus that killed, I think, 13 people total, but two top Iranian generals. So this is retaliation for that. And didn't we kill, like, the so leader many. of Hamas's oh. chil- three kids? Didn't, like, the leader of Hamas lose, like, three three of his sons lately, last week? Yeah. The United States targeted one of the, him, and then killed some of his children, I think, maybe even grandchildren. But they didn't get him. I don't think they got him, but they got the kids, I think. Yeah, they got his kids. They didn't, yeah, they didn't get him. And so. There's three sons. That's the difference between a targeted assault from this administration and last one. We got that Soleimani guy, remember? They just got him, like, and his car all by itself. Right. This one, they just get the children? Well, it was more of an Israeli airstrike. Now, that's scary looking. Yeah. Now that's that's the Iron Dome or whatever that the Israel's throwing up, so none of this stuff comes in. But they're uh, you know Iran's trying to get they're trying to get stuff in to kill people. Are they not? Sure. So, do they do they know when they're firing off three hundred that? The majority of them are going to get shot down. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and but they're like especially Man. when they take four hours to get to you. <laughs> 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 you got plenty of time. Is that I, how long it takes? To I get... mean, it was a few hours. Yeah, <clears throat> and and like so, where <laughs> should we? And and here's a story from CBS, and and it says U.S. will not participate 
uh, and the in the strike against I- Iran, senior ofi- senior officials, you know, state. So, like, what should, regardless of your political affiliation, what should we be doing? I mean, should we be there? And didn't we actually help with 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 regards to this particular strike more so than the reporting, or did we? Did, are they reporting that we helped a lot on this? They're saying I think it was like what seventy to eighty bombs were shot down by the, the U.S. US. Yes. and then also I think it was Jordan and UK. A- UK, yes. So Talked everybody out. in the region was helping. Uh, I wouldn't Israel. say everyone, but certainly <laughs> Jordan and the U.S. and the UK. Christian said their support for Israel's security is ironclad, but behind the scenes, the president clearly working to avoid a full-scale war in the Middle East. CBS's Skylar Henry is at the White House with more on that. Skylar. Give it to me, Sky. Hey, Jerika, good evening to you. Well, President Biden spent Sunday making calls to both foreign leaders and members. But now, during all of this, we've not had him. He's not addressed our nope. country. I can't even tell you the no. last time nope. that he addressed our country. And don't you think that you should probably, just just saying. He did the same thing with October 7th. It took him days before he said a word about it. Members of Congress stressing continued support. I mean, even if you don't like the guy or not, you want to know, you want to hear it from the president and what we're did doing. You, any administration, the citizens of the United States, I think expect their, it's called a Rose Garden meeting. They have to, they should appear in the Rose Garden, do a press conference and tell everyone in the United States that everything's going to be okay. Or what our, You're supposed or, to be the consoler in chief at this our, point. What our position is yep. and what, what moving forward. Obama did it every Pretty single sure. time. A U.S. official oh, with direct knowledge of the conflict. <laughs> Not this Joe. way, Joe. Joe. You're like screaming for him. Yeah. Joe. Way. Joe. <laughs> Not to the bushes. <laughs> Joe. Get, stay up. Joe, stay out of the bushes. He looks like Bigfoot. Oh, <laughs> He's walking all slow like Bigfoot. Shame. Stay out of the bushes, buddy. Get back over here. We got a, we got a big Rose Garden meeting. Joe, over here. Ooh. Israel tells CBS News wow. President Biden told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu America will not participate in a retaliatory strike on Iran following Saturday's drone and missile attack. Though the administration says it will protect U.S. forces and troops in the region if they're threatened. They wanted to cause damage, no question about that. But they were utterly unsuccessful in doing so. Senior administration officials called Israel. And that's why we'll be bombing the hell out of uh, Israel, out of uh, Iran later today. <laughs> defense quote spectacular, touting the extraordinary level of. Court- I mean, if you knew that none of these are going to come through and hit your house, it'd be nice. It'd be a nice little fireworks show to watch, wouldn't it? nation from allies um, to help. I think it would but, suck to be Israel and be isolated in the Middle East where no one around you wants to help you except for the United States who half-heartedly is doing it because the president says don't and then he like only does enough to to help in situations like this but he's going to allow them to do a non-surgical strike where they kill you know children and gan- grandchildren instead of the target. It's just it's poor it's a poor look. You're either supporting Israel or you're not. And I don't think you can do this half-assed The challenges still remain in the doing. region and with public perception. What I think Israel should do is pause for the moment, um, consult with its close allies and partners, assess the damage and the activity, and then decide what is the most appropriate response. A new CBS News poll released Sunday, gathered before Iran's attack, shows nearly 40 percent of Americans want President Biden to encourage Israel to stop military actions in Gaza. What? Oh, yeah. Because, it's not popular. I mean, 63 percent of Americans say that more humanitarian aid should be sent to Palestinians. But what? <laughs> most Republicans polled still oppose that. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill agree Israel needs support, but what that measure looks like is still in question. The best way to we're going to sit here and bitch about it until it's too late. Help Israel rebuild its anti-missile and anti-drone capacity is by passing that supplemental. And Skylar, as the Iran-Israel conflict is getting a lot of attention, some lawmakers have been sounding the alarm about how to bring Ukraine aid up for a vote. What do we know about that? Yeah, we're now we're still in Ukraine, uh, Ukraine too, are we not? Yeah. I mean, we're helping them. We're helping Israel. Yeah, well, President Biden has urged Congress to pass a $95 billion supplemental aid package that would include funding for both Ukraine and Israel. But Republicans want stricter immigration policies at the U.S.-Mexico border. Yeah. We're not helping these. We need you to shut the borders down. 
border in exchange for getting more aid to Kyiv. As for Israel, Speaker Mike Johnson said today a House vote on a security package is coming this week. Whether Ukraine is included is unclear. Jerika. All right, Skyler, so thank you. We don't we don't really know to the extent of what we're going to help at this point. It's, it's, we don't it's, know it's, anything. It's, it's a bill that's been proposed, and they got to get it passed. Can't the president just, isn't he the commander in chief? And can't he just, he can pretty much declare military action without having to get a Congress or Senate ap approval, does it? Can't he? Not really. I mean, so he, he has to. Get the get both to go. You know, if he's like, hey, listen, I'm going to send like, the war uh, authority from the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war was in effect for 20 years, and the president would just go back and rely on that. And I think when they withdrew from Afghanistan, they may have removed it, but they may have just left it hanging out there so that any president can do whatever <laughs> they want, relying on that old law. Wait, so you're saying Vietnam and World War II got congressional approval? Absolutely. So did so did the Iraqi war. Yeah. Before we went in, there was a vote. It was like a hundred percent. It was. Vote, yeah. It's well, like the last time the the Congress and Senate were you know in unity. Well, T-shirt sure will twenty five dollars in the cash app. Thank you. Uh, I got to go words, and then there's a package that somebody has sent. Uh, one had one was an envelope to me, and then I think the rest was to um, uh, to Dan and Jay. Am I right? Yep. yep. And who's it? From? Do we know who it's from? Um, I think we do know who it's from. I think it's from. I don't um, glasses hold on here. I think it's from. Hold on. So it's uh, open while Dan or Jay is in the studio, and then it said someone in chat Dave said Warning? to give you Dave Warning. Yep. It said to give you the card, so you have the envelope. All right, cool. We'll open that next. If you want a deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to bubbaarmyhq.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge show. We'll be back after these words. That's, they never ratified that, ever. So it's not really a law. That's why Trump said, I'm not going to follow it. And then Biden came back in and said, we're going to do it. Because when Obama did the original Iran nuclear deal, neither Congress nor Senate would approve it. So this whole time, we've just been doing it. And so when Biden took over and he took, he took away the Trump policies, he gave them $200 billion, which is how they're able to do this. But he, well, right we now, funded he's it. He's only released like 80. What is 200? No? Maybe that's what's that now. This is what the internet says. I'll do for the rest of you. She just fingered us like that. No, no, no. I said question. No, I said question. No, no, no. It wasn't a quiet. It was a question. Um, since 1941, Congress has declared war only six times, all during World War II. Congress authorized troop deployment in Vietnam, but because it did not issue a declaration of war on North Vietnam and the Viet Cong, the Vietnam War is technically speaking not considered a war in the United States. Does that mean anything? I mean, it's like not technically war. I know it was, but it's like. Well, well I, the way that they didn't declare war, right? But if you look at you still have to get uh, if you look at Desert Brian, I didn't get any money, man. But I'm just gonna send you your stuff. Congressional approved because there's no there's nothing else we're gonna do with it. The Gulf Storm. What up, JC? Still in effect. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Because even, even I thought Vietnam, they, they didn't get approval to send troops over. Yeah. Well, before we went into Afghanistan, they got full approval from Congress and Senate. Let me. If we only had 25 on a cash app today. Yeah. No, Belinda Fennel. So we had. 50. What's up, everybody? Which? I'm sorry, Blinda Fennel. Blinda Fennel. Oh, Blinda Fennel was 25 on the Venmo and 25 on the cash? Yes. Okay. What up, Chris? Thank you, Belinda Fennel. Make sure, let me make sure we give her shout outs to both. What up? I mean, maybe it's because it's stacked to say it's a little slow. Yeah, I'm thinking so. Tax day sucks. Sorry, Bruce. Yeah, we're gonna have to hit the streets. Sam's getting his today.
Oh, so the next 199 is on April 26th, Bo, your birthday? No, it's 19th. It's this Friday. Oh, it's this Friday. Okay. Correct. What up, Brian? Uh, Gaffey or Gaffey, I'm sorry. I uh, I got Ashton Villa in a card break yesterday, and I got a bunch of their card. I got a bunch of their guys, and I didn't really know anything about them. I don't know if like they got good players or anything. Oh, thank you, Steve. Oh, fuck yeah. There we go. Big win. Big win right, out, right after I dip my toe in the uh, Ashton Villa pond. Man, Nick, you can <laughs> Man, Nick, you had me freak. I didn't know what I was looking at, Nick, because you stole Caviar's line. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be at 199 unless I'm banned. <laughs> I killed it last time. And plus, I heard there's going to be a shortage of today, so of course I'm going to step up. <laughs> What's up, Timothy? Hold on, you got a bubble 199 roster? Oh, yeah, I've been, trying, I've been texting everyone this morning. All right, All right let, me, yeah. let me know. We'll do. Thank you. I have no sarcasm, Rusty Tane. I I enjoy suits, and I I just want all. He doesn't the, know what the fuck suits is. He couldn't tell you one fucking character. Harvey Specter. Okay. Bitch, about to get mine. Who's who's his who's his secretary? Fucking Gina. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why are you quizzing me about the stupid fucking show? Did you say Megan Markle? Because you said. I know. Because I'm just fucking around, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a rib, bro. Okay, I got you, bro. On the rib. What's up, Dan Wiz? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Brandy Love. I hope it's a good uh, good podcast. She's pretty Sean opinionated. Sean Peter said $100. Texas ain't got me down. What? Sean Peter said $100 on the uh, cash app. Right, say that, taxes okay. don't have them down. Thank you, Sean. Michael Rucker. Dude, I was watching Suits and this the chick wanted to bang the guy and he was like, if you sign something that says I'm not your lawyer anymore, we can fuck. And she thought they had something, Bubba. Yeah. Uh All the times Hulk Hogan or Tucker Carlson called in. We have it all for you on BubbaArmyHQ.com. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Uh, Seth, don't try to get on my coat's tip. I mean, on my stuff. Don't try to get on my suit's tip. No, I was watching Suits and then... You uh, were not. You've not watched one minute of Suits. Bubba, this chick wanted to have sex with a lawyer. And then she was like, can we have sex? And he was like, if you sign this, it says, you know, I won't be your lawyer anymore. And she thought that they had something there after he boned her. It's crazy. It's only one scene, though. I could tell you about a bunch of more. <laughs> Perfect. I love Suits. I can't wait for Jay to watch at least three of them. Three. And then let me know if he's going to stick with it or he thinks it's stupid. You know, if you had Meghan to book- Markle looks hot as hell. Tell you that. What, if you had to book Jay for three hours of a time, I don't know. I don't even know what that costs, oh, but you're booking three hours of him to watch Suits. I mean, it'd be <laughs> 2750 to three Gs. I mean, for, for three solid hours. You're like, Jay, I just need three hours, man, just to watch three episodes gonna have of Suits. A, I'm not going to have a 3G check tomorrow for you, Jay. Sorry. For your Sean, time. It's the $8,500 cash cube now. There, there you go. <laughs> Sean Peter said $100 oh. on the uh, cash app. Thank you so much. Uh, Lummy, we also, uh, listen, I'm, I hope I don't catch a lot of heat for this, but I'm going to our debut of our Diaco Law $10,000 cash cube is going to be delayed. And we're not going to be able to do it this Friday. Um, we were going to do it this Friday, Lummy. Yeah, to Kenny Chesney. It was going to be Saturday. Yeah, I mean, 420. It was going to be Saturday. <laughs> and and we, we just listen, here's the deal. I don't I don't have 
the sunglasses or the koozies in yet. They they are still getting manufactured. And, in America. And, and, and I still haven't taken the cream machine to Terry's to remedy let me the the cooling issue you know, the fi- the fan yeah. need, the fan needs fixed plus i need to, i just need to give it to terry for a few days for him to go through it just to make sure then we have to let me rig up a, a tv system and where the current tv is now i was going to take that out and try to weld a piece of metal in there the, the but instead we're just going to leave it and then let me we're going to hang a tv on you know like yeah. over where that TV is, we have to put another TV. Yeah, with the mountain and everything. So I just don't think that we're ready. So we need to look at the next function potentially. Morgan Walling. When when now when is that? Um, I don't know the exact date. I just know it's the next big Morgan country Walling? concert, yeah, and I know June? I'm going. What about yeah. So that means I got parking well, passes. Yeah, our first our first one might be the the Latin Suns Juneteenth. Yeah, okay. that Let's might be see. our first one. If you need a bucks, you know, parking pass for like what big country event though, that's I know that I'm going for sure to Morgan Walling. Yeah. And so I can get you a parking pass for we'll that. Well definitely, we'll definitely I believe that's June eleventh. That quick. would be That'll before be June. Right? That'll be before Juneteenth, because Juneteenth I think is June nineteenth. Correct. Right? right. So Morgan Wallen Wallen Lummy, that big country concert uh, get with Jay and Dan and whatever. And that's yep. that's gonna be the debut of it. <clears throat> which means you will have our sunglasses and we we, we can't I'm you so have to sorry. It's July if 11th. you don't have your swag, then the the wheel of you know yeah. life is no fun. It means everybody gets to go in the cube the and we'll have chance. no money. Exactly. If <laughs> every like two spin, contestants. if every spin is a cube, <laughs> I mean, within ten people, we'll be done. So anyway, I'm sorry. It's it's July 11th. July 11th. Right. Okay. So, so, so it's up. looking no, it's like a, yeah, July 11th and 12th. So we probably have to pick the 12th because that's the uh, that's a Friday. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. The 12th. So July 12th. But that will be after the Latin Sons Juneteenth celebration at South St. Pete's very own Latin Sons Barbershop. That's what we'll roll it out at. So, OJ, supposedly all of his kids came and paid respects to him before he died. And they all, I guess they all had to sign NDAs. Now, is that oh, in common, Jay? Like, like with regards? Okay. Oh, yeah, if we did that with be, my father. Okay. So what is, like, what does <laughs> no. that? No, what I'm saying is like. Is that so that none of them can say, okay, I am OJ's daughter and I'm going to be able to write a book because on his deathbed, he told me how it went down. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have five different stories and five different book deals and five different movies. Right. Well, there's a longstanding theory that his son, one of his sons may have had something to do with it. The chef's son. It was a big allegation. A rumor has been out there forever. So, you know, it's kind of odd. That you have your children sign NDAs when you've been accused of criminal homicide, you've bound, been yeah, but, found but, liable but think about of, how, of murder. But think about how uncontrollable and how much they could that could be potentially worth if you didn't have them sign NDAs. I mean, there'd be five guys shopping stories, oh, right? Oh, it's great lawyering. You know, no, his, his lawyer, lawyers yeah. did a hell of a job if he got them all to sign it. They supposedly, the people for the NFL Players Association... They, I think Dave Durison. Oh, Dave Durison from the Bears. From the Bears who committed suicide. Um, uh, Junior Seau. There's been several in, former NFL greats that have committed suicide and their families donated their brain to C- CTE. Didn't uh, <clears throat> Junior Seau request it in his note? Yeah, he did. He yeah, shot so that, himself in the heart. Yeah. yeah. And so they've, the people that do these CTE studies, on 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 fallen NFLers have asked for OJ's brain, and the city goes. I'm, I'm sorry. The o, o, OJ's family says it's a hard no. He's gonna be he's gonna be cremated. <laughs> it's gonna be a no for me, dog. OJ Simpson <laughs> will be a cremated. A state executor says hard no to the controversial uh, ex athlete's brain <laughs> being studied for CTE. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I mean, like I. I, I I mean, he's going to be cremated. Why I mean, not? Any results they find can't be good. Like, you know, they're, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, his left, uh, whatever, his left lobe uh, was damaged for, for getting six, hit 615 times, and that's the lobe that makes you snap and want to kill your wife. But he didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? We he didn't, didn't do it. We didn't see that on OJ's lobe, so he didn't do it. <clears throat> All right, so we have a package. Before we end the show, we have a package uh, to open. And Jay, it was a package addressed to you and Dan and me. Yep. 
And what did from the great Dave? I think the guy's name is is it Dave Werner? Uh, is it Dave? Is it Warfring? What what's his name? Warning. Warning. Dave Warning. And what does he have for you, Jay? It just says, "Please open with Dr. Dan and Jay in the studio." And then there was that. I think you, your envelope should probably be opened at the same time, or maybe before. Yeah, I mean, it's a very, very, very long. Fun. Two- it's a very long. Oh, look at that! Bubba the Love Spun Foundation hats. Oh, that's awesome! With the number twelve on the back, Perfect. it's got a little serve sacrifice. Uh, what's that say? Restructure. I, can't I got it. you. Anyway, oh, I with think, the the flag with the blue line. I, service I, sacrifice remembrance. I think Dave cool. owns, uh, or is the president of cool. a company called. Um, I think it's it's a Q2, yep. Q2 engineered systems and technology, and I think he's a big wig for them. Maybe even the owner, uh, and he has a very long letter about how he's listening to me since the old XL days, very cool. and uh, loves the new lineup. Uh, provided a T-shirt, he said 3X might be a little seem to run a little tight. I'll get you a 4X. Yep, Dave Warren in crew shirts. I guess he must. That's awesome. Ford Racing as well. Is that for Bubba? You want me to bring it to him? Like it, yeah. And uh, he has a race team as well. And then he provided my foundation with a one thousand dollar check. Oh, nice! To my foundation. Can I throw this uh, shirt to you? Uh, no, you cannot. Okay, thank you. Um, I I'll, I have this letter is quite lengthy. Bubba, since we have six hats and a shirt, are you sure that we can't go out to Kenny Chesney this Saturday? You can. <laughs> I mean, there's a, you there's mean something in that letter is a blank shirt, too, which has to have some meaning. Unless it was just to create space. I don't know. Maybe. But anyway, hmm. uh, thank you so much, Dave. I'll read your letter. Uh, pri- oh, I, I've, read, I've already read through it. It's quite lengthy. And I'm not, and, and I'm not, and I'm not a good reader. But, man, thank you so very much. For your for your generosity for uh, for my foundation, my foundation tries to do good things, and um, the best. And I and I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, did you see this? This woman it was a uh, this is a f- former prison guard turned sex worker. Well, when they say that, they instantaneously like OnlyFans is considered to be a sex worker. This I think this chick just. Started an OnlyFans account, and why wouldn't you? Can you see what she looks like? Like, how is she not raped every day? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. By Looking the, like by that. The inmates? Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm sure I mean, she didn't walk around with the push up in her. her I jugs mean, but is she, she not, seems like a dick. Is she not absolutely unbelievably beautiful? Yes. yes. Yeah. She's now built nice up an online following and can earn more than ten thousand dollars in a single week. I think she's on OnlyFans. <laughs> Hope so. That's where she belongs. And uh, you know, Ooh, like yeah, stunning. Look, look, stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Look at those shoulders. Yeah. Other than that body tat, though. <clears throat> I mean, wow. If I'm a prisoner, I'm trying to act up to get manhandled by her, huh? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> wow. So anyway, I mean, and then 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 finally, I was going to leave you with. I had I had it here. I'll find it. Where they said if Britney Spears wanted to just stop being crazy and doing a knife dance every couple weeks, and then her family <laughs> having to go to the court and say, "Hey, listen, she's still crazy because she's doing the knife dances." And I will tell you, for what what is she forty? Yeah, Older. she's like forty two. Uh, yeah, for like forty two, they're saying that if she wanted to, and she opened up an OnlyFans account, I think she would. What's it say? She make a hundred million, or was it ten million? <laughs> Probably easy. She'd break records. Yeah, yeah. For I'd, sure. I'd subscribe. Here we go. No, yeah, OnlyFans manager, yeah, hundred million. Hundred million a year. Oh, come on. Britney Not Spears. Britney Spears would make a hundred million a year. Is she show a picture from back in the day. I think she's gonna show full kickouts. Well, I mean, her for JJ's all over the internet. Um, she would never have to worry about music again. She'd make a hundred million a year, and she—I mean, she already does stuff like this, like where yeah, she's squeezing that, together. But it's, it's like literally, it's, there's been out shots out there for two decades. Oh dear, <laughs> she's almost like oversaturated with her JJ already. She's giving it away for that free. Her, that she? her JJ isn't really that. Oh, is that her? Yeah. yeah. That's not looking so good. No, it's what? not. That's not bad. Come on. That's it's not a bad good. Angle. That's, oh, it's a bad that's angle. bad. Oh, Look at the mirrors, though, Bubba. Look at this side. Fine. She's fine. Can you think about how just bad she is? She's crazy. probably cream dead, though. She is. 
You, you, you know what? She probably is good in bed until she's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If that makes any sense. It does, it actually. Sure does. Like, she's not just always good in bed. She's just always good in bed when she's got when she's got control of that crazy gene of hers. Right. You it's know, not, then she's she, stabbing you like you're uh, Austin she, Wolf. Yeah, like, she's hot as hell in bed most of the time, but then she gets that crazy gene that either wants to have sex with you good or kill you. Oh, yeah. You don't know which one's coming to listen. When you're a woman, in. when you're a woman, and you've made as much money as she have, and you don't have custody of your children, that says a lot. Sure does. It really does. For any any normal woman, from from Jay's wife to the Merch Crick to <clears throat> to to Krista to any woman that I know, my sister, if she had kids, every woman I know has at least fifty percent shared custody of their child. No woman that I've ever known or associated with lost custody of their kids and their husband has primary custody and the mom can only have like supervised regulation. Very unusual. Very unusual. The court sides with their starting point is 50-50. Like they, unless you walk into a family court with a heroin needle that's so, yeah, out of I your mean, out of your it, arm as you're in court. Right, as a, as a, as you're in a police chase to get to court because <laughs> you robbed a Seven Eleven. No, and you're I, right though. If Kevin Federline is the better option, right. there's problems. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. And she can only see her kids when he thinks it's appropriate. And then don't forget, for ten years, she, her dad ran her entire life. Like she couldn't even drive. Like mm-hmm. she couldn't say. Hey, Dad, like, hold on. She's 35, 30 years old. She should be able to get in any one of her, I mean, she can afford any kind of car, and just get in there and drive. She couldn't. For 10 years, she was like, she had to even have to ask permission to, you know. They had her on an IUD so she wouldn't be able to have a child. Yeah. Thank like God. a forced IUD from yeah. the executor. A forced IUD from the court saying, you have already squirted out two kids. <laughs> Your craziness is does not warrant any You're more squirting. Up You're done with Scout. kids. You're done. You're done. Up top, Boy Scout. <laughs> uh, we will do the Monday exclusive podcast that'll be right here. Uh, no, it will not be on any, anywhere here that you can currently see or hear me. It'll be exclusively on our podcast world. So wherever you get your podcast, iHeart. Uh, iTunes, uh, Bubble Army HQ, Spotify, it doesn't matter. Are we on Pandora, Seth? I didn't know Pandora was still a thing, Bubba. Oh, okay. <laughs> MySpace. Check. We'll do the Monday exclusive podcast. It'll be available probably by like 1 o'clock. We'll have it plastered over our X and our Facebook and what have you. Jay, thank you. Thank you. See you guys in a little bit. Thanks for letting me finish. You've been listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show, starring me, Bubba the Love Sponge, co-host and show historian, Lummox, co-host, Anna Hummel, co-host, Dr. Dan Diaco, Esquire, of Council, co-host, J. Diaco, Esquire, the Spitting Cobra, of Council, Rhett, the Filthy Ginger, video editor. Yeah, back here wearing sh- up, it's Mini Macho. The BRN agent, Thomas Buttoned Up Bean. And for everything else, go to TheBubbaArmy.com. Now? Time for the legal disclaimer. Exactly. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this show without express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. We must dissuade him of this delusion. Until next time, always remember. I'm a pig, hello, I'm back.